Hello everybody and welcome back to the Games on Quick Hotfix. This is Random Number Generation and I am filling in today for Sky. Uh, we are going to have Fire Red Kazo Iron Mon randomizer today. Uh, before we get into that, I do just have a few quick announcements. Uh, Frame Fatales will be having its next all-women speedrunning event, Flame Fatales, in late August. So Game of Volunteer submissions are open right now until May 22nd for that. So you can type exclamation FF in Twitch chat or you can go to gamesonquick.com slash Frame Fatales for more information on that. Uh, and also, Summer Games Unquick 2022 is also coming up at the end of June, so you be sure to register before May 23rd for that if you want to attend our event live in Minnesota. Uh, with all that said, we have Xwater here to explain the, the rule sets and anything else uh, we might need to know about this. So how are you doing, Xwater? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. I'm super excited to show off Kaizo Ironmon today. Um, it's super fun. It's a great new take. It basically turns... Uh, classic Pokemon experiences into kind of like a roguelike experience where you're resetting a lot, but it's new and exciting every single time. Okay. Yeah, so the rule set is very interesting in, in Kaizo Ironmon. There's actually a few different versions of Ironmon. There's basic Ironmon where it's a little, it's the most approachable version. Um, it's great for newcomers. There is ultimate Ironmon, which is like the perfect version of Ironmon. It's the perfect amount of challenging with, uh, without being a little too brutal. And then for the people who really want to push it to the limit, the absolute hardest version is what we're going to be showing off tonight. It's Kaizo Ironmon, where limitations are placed all over the player. The Everything that's, that's powerful in the game is banned, so you can't use it. Things like healing abilities, things like using potions outside of battle, all sorts of things. So... It's going to be a really, a really, as the name of the show implies, random run that's going to encounter a lot of, a lot of hardship. It typically takes a lot of, like, attempts to just escape that first rival battle in the lab. Okay, this sounds really challenging and really interesting. Uh, I'm excited for it. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. I'll run through a quick baseline of just like the standard rules real quick for all of the audience at home to be able to follow along. Um, the big, the big, big rules, and I'll go into details with the little stuff as we go. The big rules are number one, um, as the name implies, Iron Mon. It's kind of like you're playing the game with a single Mon. You're not going to be using any other Pokemon. You can switch around, but typically your party is only going to have the one Mon. In Kaizo Iron Mon, you will only ever have one Pokemon usable at, at a time. In um, the big the big challenge in Kaizo Ironmon comes from not like the limitations that are placed on you as well as the buffs that are placed on the enemies. All of the enemy trainers, all of the wild Pokemon, all of the gym leaders, they're gonna be scaled up to be 50% higher level than they are by default. So whereas Brock would have a level 14 Onyx and a level 12 Geodude in the vanilla version, in this game, he's going to have a team that includes two completely randomized Pokemon that are 50% stronger than that, about level around level 19 and 21 for those two. And the other big thing in Kaizo Ironmon specifically is that every boss trainer is given an additional, I think, three Pokemon. So Brock is actually going to have a team of five, and they're all going to be around the level 20 range, which is going to be really hard to get past because they'll all be randomized. We might end up fighting five legendaries. We're going to be around the level 20 range when we get there because another rule is you cannot farm uh, grind in the grass. You may only gain experience from trainers. So you have a very small pool of experience to actually stockpile on before the gym battle. Typically leaving your single level 20-ish Pokemon up against Brock's five level 20-ish Pokemon. This sounds really challenging. <laughs> <laughs> it's rough. It's rough. Yeah. It's a lot of a lot of hardship, but it is very fun. I think the randomization of it is what makes it so exciting because as you go through, you know, you're fighting all this this massive variety of Pokemon. Every trainer, every grass is randomized. Every item is randomized. Every move learned is randomized. All that stuff. In Kaizo Ironmon, and in all of them, TMs are randomized. But you can only use TMs that you obtain from gym leaders. Leaving your usable move pool in Kaizo Ironmon down to whatever your Pokemon learns on its own. In addition to the eight TMs you're going to get from the gyms if you even get that far. Typically, most runs don't make it out of the lab. There's about a 25% chance on any run that you're even going to beat the rival in the lab because 
the the level boost it's going to be a level eight on their side versus a level five oh, geez, yeah. on yours yeah but anyway I'm, I'm rambling on about the rules i think the best way for people to get a grip on it is to is to jump in and see it firsthand so whenever you're ready i'd love to start showing it off uh yeah uh whenever you're ready uh, you can give a countdown we can get the the timer started and the run going perfect well i'm good to go so then let's uh let's count it down i'm good to start from five yep cool then counting it down from five four three two one zero and here we go so one thing to note as we're getting started is i am playing with a mod that uh, the community has created. By the way, there is a really awesome Kaizo Ironmon community. Ironmon community in general, there's a massive Discord uh, filled with resources, guides, tips, community discussion, all that sorts of stuff. And I'm sure if you Google Ironmon, you will find that no problem. I'm using a mod from that community that actually skips all the intros. So we didn't have to name our character. We didn't have to walk into the bushes. We didn't have to come to the lab. It just straight up puts you in the game in the heat of it because you're resetting so much that it it really saves over a thousand attempts it saves a lot of time to be able to skip that stuff um jumping into the lab is where our first rule kind of comes into play here the rule of random selection so i am not allowed to look at any of the starter pokemon before selecting them i must choose before going in However, there is another rule, I know they're just piling on, where uh, there are three Pokemon in which if they show up, I may take them from the lab, no questions asked. And my three selections are Steelix, our Snorlax, and the Pokemon featured on my shirt today, Gengar. So any of those three show up, I will be allowed to cheat. Otherwise, I am stuck with wherever I choose. And as is tradition, I always, always, always love to choose mid. Sometimes my community prefers the other sides, but I'm going to send us to the mid, which means that the right side will be the Pokemon who is stuck in the lab for eternity. Kakuna, I'm sorry, but you're not going, you're not getting a home today, Kakuna. And Beedrill will be, though. Beedrill's going to be the, uh, the Pokemon our rival takes, and we will be working with a Dusclops, a Pokemon that I think is a pretty solid pick outside of the lab. Um, the Dusclops has a BST that stands for base stat total. I got to give him a good name. I like to give my Pokemon good names. I'm going to name him Swayze after the movie Ghost. We're going to name him Swayze. So we've got our Dusclops. It's ghost type Pokemon are particularly really good in Kaizo Ironmon because there are so, so, so many normal and fighting type moves in this game and ghosts are immune to those entirely. So it just makes you absolutely resistant to, to almost, almost like a, a fifth of the entire move set in the game. Now, as I've uh, mentioned a lot today, there is complete randomization throughout the entire challenge, including the stats we have, the ability we know, and the moves available to us. Any moves that would have been illegal are automatically removed from our move set, so that's why we only have three instead of four right now. But these three moves are pretty good. Frustration, it's, uh, I think it's, it scales off of how much your Pokemon doesn't like you. So, baseline, we got the ghost from the lab, it's gonna be at a baseline, I think about 60, 50, maybe 70 power. Fury Cutter's not gonna help us too much, and Sky Uppercut's not gonna be great against Beedrill. And we're also terribly slow. We randomized some bad speed here. But all that said, our defenses are high, our attacks are balanced. We'll probably have a chance at getting out of the lab in this particular battle, but if that doesn't work, then we're gonna be back in the decision-making chair and running, running straight down the lab again. All right, and we have Swayze versus Beedrill right here. A battle for the ages. Let's see what the Beedrill knows. Hopefully nothing too devastating. The eight, ha the level eight is a big difference. Is a big difference right now to have to deal with. We'll see how much damage we're able to lay out here. That Beedrill using Dragon Dance is gonna be a little dangerous. If it uses a physical type move, we're gonna be in trouble. But seeing it use Dragon Dance so much is kind of leading me to believe that maybe it's only damaging moves that it has available to it are normal or fighting. So we might just have a chance on making it out of the lab on the first go here. Things are looking pretty good. Things are looking pretty good. 
It's going to take two more hits. One if we're lucky. If we make it out of the lab, this is going to be a remarkable, a remarkable place to be. It's worth noting that in... Oh, and a critical oh. hit! Swayze providing for the people. 271 experience is going to actually be pivotal to success in this run right now because that's going to get us to level 8, which is going to lead me into discussing our next rule, the pivot rule. So as you can see on the, on the screen right now, my stats, I've got... Eight speed. That is that is gonna mean I am I am getting hit first by every enemy we run into, and that's gonna it's gonna be rough. So we're gonna wanna upgrade this Pokemon to something a little more powerful. Swayze's unfortunately gonna leave the team and we're gonna find something a little different. Now in Kaizo Ironmon, when you are switching Pokemon, you can only catch something that is equal to or less than the level that you currently are. And the best options are typically level 8 in the early game. So hitting level 8 out of the lab is the sweet spot to be. Sometimes you can get 9 and it's really nice, but an 8 is a very comfortable place to be. Now we're going to go wander around the, the bushes as is right now, looking for potential options of who we want to use, who we want to play with. Um, but first got to bring Oak his package, just as we do in the vanilla game. It is a shame, though. Swayze's got some good stats. Really balanced, high defenses. Not too much uh, of either of the attack stats, but that speed was a little too low to work with, but otherwise, really nice. All right, and let's see what we got here. A tiny mushroom. Again, the items are all randomized, just as everything else. Hence the title of the show. Everything is going to be randomized. So we're going to be praying for all sorts of useful items as we walk around the map. The more potions, the more status condition healers we find, the more comfortable this entire run is going to feel for us. That's the main goal, is to just find all the all the items that are gonna be able to keep us safe in those dangerous situations. Some X attacks, some X defenses, all those various stat booster items can be very useful in the late game as well. All right, and now that, the, now that the delivery is made, we are allowed to start just exploring to our heart's content, seeing what Pokemon are available, what they can do. We call this the uh, the scouting phase of the run. If Swayze had the, the right stat spread, I definitely would have used Swayze, but in this particular run, speed being this low is just something that I personally don't like to risk. Some runners of Ironmon will risk the low speed Pokemon. I unfortunately am not one of those runners. Now this is an interesting find. A Vulpix in the grass is actually an interesting find. There are a lot of really, really strong fire evolution Pokemon and Vulpix, as um, some of you will know, evolves by Firestone. Now just like has been on theme with the rest of the run, evolutions are, you guessed it, random, but not entirely. When, uh, when Pokemon evolve, they will evolve into something that shares a type with the Pokemon that is evolving. So it'll be something that shares the type with Vulpix, a fire type, and something that is within a 10% range of the stat spread total, the BST base stat total of the target evolution. So in Vulpix's case, that would mean we are going, we it would evolve into something that is between 450 and 550 base stat total. Generally, the higher that number, the stronger the Pokemon, especially in Ironmon. And anything 500 or above in Ironmon is very, very, very powerful, valuable, all that stuff. Fire type Pokemon, there are so many of them that have a high stat total in that area. So evolving into a random fire type Pokemon that is so around as powerful as Ninetales would be really useful for us. It would open up Charizard, it would open up Blaziken, it would open up Typhlosion, all the fire starters. I'm really having a hard time running away from this little pinchy boy, but so far we have not found anything super exciting in this bush. Hopefully we do. If not, we're going to go check Viridian Forest and hopefully find a good Pokemon there. The only downside here is we are going to be stuck running from these battles pretty aggressively. What with speed this low, it's going to be a challenge to even be able to escape.
So how are the rules feeling for you so far, Sarge? How are the rules? Uh, uh, should I call you Charge? Should I call you Churchin? Uh, people normally call me Church. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, so I, I'm fairly familiar with uh, Iron Man rules. It's just the the Iron Mon rules that I'm a little fuzzy on. They're gotcha. feeling pretty straightforward. Just really, really, like they're straightforward. Just hard, I guess is the. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot. It's it's it, there's a lot of small caveats. Like there's the baseline rules, and then. As you're playing through, there's so much, so much information to take in surrounding all those rules. But yeah, the the TLDR of it is pretty simple. Get one Pokemon, beat the game with it, and it's gonna yeah. be and it's gonna be a lot of randomness along the way. I do I do like the fact that um, you're able to just like switch off. Like I know you can do that in most ones, but like the fact that it's not limiting you to the first Pokemon you get is really yeah. nice in this, I think. Yeah, it is really nice. I I a lot of runners will just stick with the Pokemon they start with. Zangoose is actually a decent, not amazing, but a decent switch option. Um a lot of runners will stick with the Pokemon they start with and if the first trainer in the forest takes them down, then they deal with it. I like to spend my time hunting for the perfect alternate Pokemon because sometimes you're going to run into those Pokemon that are like really, really high stat totals and they have really good abilities and really good moves. And when you're finding them in the grass, you actually have an, an opportunity to see them in action. So like an enemy hits you with a with a Thunderbolt and it deals a lot of damage and you know you have a high special defense, then you have the information that like, okay, so this this has a really high special attack. It has a good move. All sorts of information is available just from seeing these enemies attack you. Of course, there is the risk of them defeating you, but you know, what is reward without any risk? Yeah, it brings a really interesting dynamic into the whole uh, thing of like, do you just, do you run with it or do you like do what you're doing now where you kind of scout out and feel like, is this a good Pokemon? Is this worth taking? It's a really interesting dynamic to have. Yeah, exactly. So I like to real to to go and take a little scout into um, the Pokedex online. I'm looking it up right now, just really quickly, seeing what Glalie's stat total is. It is about 480, which is pretty good. The only downside is Ice typing is a really rough typing to play with in Ironmon. Ice typing just has a lot of weaknesses, and the only resistance it has is itself, ice. So this is an option for us right here. This Glalie is an option, but it's not something I'm necessarily excited to catch. Oh, um, just gonna jump in real quick. Uh, Sky is here, so I'm gonna uh, get, pass it back off to Sky. You know, Sky, take it away, Sky. hello. Hello, I'm sorry, I must have gotten lost in the lab. It is so wonderful <laughs> to be here. x Water, thank you so much for being here. It is fantastic. And Church, thank you so much for covering for me. Thank you. Welcome, Sky. It's so good to have you here. I hope, uh, I hope you're doing well. It's great to hear your voice. How's the day? Really, really good. Um, I have been doing a ton of Kaizo so Iron Man lately. I... Would have to go back and listen to Church's introduction, but this has been something that has been exceedingly, exceedingly popular within the speedrun community in general, not just within the Pokemon community. And it is a tremendous honor to have you here, X Water. So thank you so much again for being here. Absolutely. It's such a pleasure. I'm so excited. And yeah, I know you've been doing a lot of Kaizo Ironmon on your stream. You've even got the clear, which, you know, not a lot of not a lot of the players have gotten a clear yet. It takes for some players, over a thousand attempts to even, you know, make it all the way to the Elite Four for the first time. I think my first time making it past the third gym was maybe 500 attempts in. So, um, yeah, it's 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 really fun. A lot of the speedrunning gang has picked it up and it's I mean, we got two two professionals chat room here today who have over 1000 seeds each to show you the fun and joy that is <laughs> trying to escape the lab. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So uh, in my brief absence, what is the furthest you've been so far? Could you bring me up to speed a little bit, x -Water? Absolutely. This is our first run today. This is the first run that we've jumped into. And 
We got out of the lab with the dust clops. We're searching for a pivot right now. I do like Crawjohn a lot, but that last Zangoose that we saw used Thunder Punch, and even though it was a critical hit, it still did a meaty amount of damage. That being said, with that meaty amount of damage, I have a special defense of 28. So, look, knowing that information, seeing the Thunder Punch, an extremely valuable move, as, as you know, water types are so prominent in this generation. Um, having an electric move is just very, very, very valuable on top of that Thunder Punch being one of the better ones out there that I want to take a chance and pivot to this pivot to this Zangoose and see if it's able to do anything uh, anything valuable in the in the forest before we go try and take down Brock. Absolutely. The only catch about Thunder Punch in particular. So in this gen, there's there's a lot of odd things that don't always seem as they are. One of the things is contact versus contact less moves. And when you have to make contact with a Pokemon, and I don't know if there's a clear distinguisher of when it is contact. I just know Thunder Punch is a contact move. You could end up having backlash from some kind of effect. So in other words, if you have uh, an opponent's effect like static, you could end up paralyzed or poison point. It's a really scary thing, and you don't expect it to come from a Thunder move, but Thunder Punch is one of those. So one of the things that we do as Iron Man players is we have to take notes on, okay, well, what's going on with this? Even if you do have the tracker, and yes, there is a fancy new tracker going around nowadays, sometimes things can change, not necessarily abilities, but moves and it's just one of those things you have to make sure you're always taking notes you have to make sure you're always on guard absolutely there are a few moves that most runners are are pretty scared of out there you know moves like explosion and self-destruct moves like destiny bond and for those who don't know what that does if a destiny bond is used against you and you use and you defeat that enemy pokemon who used destiny bond your fates are tied together and you both faint. And as Ironmon is a no faint challenge, if you faint, then the run is over. So you got to take notes of any time you see those moves. And even having that information can help you avoid them where, let's say, a Pidgey were to use Destiny Bond. You know that a Pidgey at level 6 is going to learn 4 more moves by level 27 or something like that you then gain the information that from level 27 forward, a Pidgey is no longer a Destiny Bond threat to you. Absolutely. And again, it's it, it's not for sure because things can shift. And I don't know if there's any rhyme or reason as to what moves get re uh, replaced in the AI. Other than, I think it's just in the order in which the Pokemon learns it. I don't yeah. think the AI is like strategic about that. No, the AI, yeah, they'll always they'll always uh, chuck their old eldest move and take the newest one. So if they learn a move every level at level five, they'll get rid of what they learned at level one sort of deal. All right, now we've got Cutman, our Zangoose. We can see a 28 HP. We're going to go take a look at the stats and see what we ended up getting. And not bad, it's just as we anticipated, a relatively high special attack that's going to pair really well with Thunder Punch was actually lost as Cutman leveled up. Apparently, Zangoose has a new move learned, but we do have Blizzard, which is another really good special move. So I don't, I'm not too upset about that. I am, however, a little upset about it being our only damaging move. <laughs> So we're in an interesting situation. A great special attack, 22. Balanced defenses, an okay speed, decent health. This is a an okay spread of stats for a Pokemon. I wouldn't call it quite S tier, not necessarily the cream of the crop, but it's workable. The only downside is we need to learn some moves and we need to learn them badly. Brock Absolutely. will give us one, which is really nice of him. But if only if we're able to defeat him in battle. And yeah, I'm looking at it right now. We learned a move at level 7, and that's what got rid of Thunder Punch. So the first one we saw was level 6 that used the Thunder Punch, and that's why that information didn't match up. But not to worry, we will be learning moves at 10 and 13 and 19. I believe. Let me double check that. Yes. So, do, have you ever had a run with Zangoose before? If so, where's the furthest you've gotten one? Zangoose has never been my front runner before. No, this is 
This is new for me, and Zangus is a dangerous front runner, uh, a little dangerous of a front runner, being a Pokemon with a stat total of 458, which is it's workable, but it's a little bit on the low side compared to work like really powerful Pokemon in Kaizo Ironmon. You know, you're, we're going to be running into legendaries all over the place. We're going to be seeing. You know, all of the last evolutions of starters as we proceed through the game, which there's a lot of Pokemon that are a lot stronger than Zangoose in raw stat totals. And if they get randomized well enough, it's going to, you you know, it's going to be it's going to be a challenge. <coughs> Absolutely, and I just want to let folks know, the fact that x Fighter had gotten out of the lab so soon, that is not very common no, in the yeah. Iron Man experience. It doesn't matter which level you're on, the lab is the lab if you're playing on Ultimate, Kaizo, or Regular. So, again, x Fighter, at the beginning, did we talk about the different difficulties and which, ones you're, which one you're playing today? Yeah, I did give a quick rundown on the various difficulties, how Ultimate's the sweet spot, Kaizo is, wow, these items that I've picked up, by the way. But yeah, Kaizo is the brutal one, though. It's the, it is the Weenie Hut Seniors, if you will. I just well give my, my cut man some multivitamins right now. Some iron, some carbos. And I was hoping that I maybe had a berry. I don't. One of the caveats of Kaizo Ironmon is that held items, except for berries, are illegal. The only thing your Pokemon is allowed to hold is a berry, so I was kind of hoping we had one for a little safety net here for Zangoose, but we'll see how we do. Our goal today during this this uh, this period of time that we have available during the show is going to be to make it as deep into the game as possible. And to do so, I am going to be absolutely open to using my resources at any time possible. Traditionally, when I'm running, I like to try and, you know, ration things and try and save it for the later game because the Elite Four is where you're really going to need to be spending those resources. I am getting a little nervous right now with this Persian taking... It's going to look like three blizzards to take down, and we've got two more Pokemon after this Persian to fight. Blizzard having only 70 accuracy right now. If we miss a single one of them... We're going to be in... And there it is! I've willed it into existence! No! Don't do that, Ice Water! <laughs> okay, uh, for all the jokes during GDQ events about commentaries, cars, it is very much a real thing during Iron Man. Uh, not so much maybe during X Water streams, but by the way, if you are not oh, following yeah. X Water, please follow X Water, twitch.tv slash X Water, for this and also wonderful speed runs. We'll get into a little bit more about what X Water is running later, but, um... You will, you absolutely will will yourself back into the lab by commentator's curse. It is very much a real thing. Pi's done it on several occasions before. Just, just be careful. Um, I don't know how much of a superstitious person Axe Potter is, but I certainly am when it comes to things like this. Yeah, but you know what? I also feel like a lucky person. We lost all uses of Blizzard, but here we are. We hit level 10. We are about to learn a move. If it deals damage, hope is not yet lost. The move we are about to learn is poison powder. It doesn't directly deal damage, but it is a solution. We might be able to work our way through this battle. Now, in removing a move, I think recycle, probably the least valuable thing we have on the board right now. Making it rain, not particularly useful, but it could negate the strength of fire type moves. Fake tears, lower the foe's special defense. I should have used this to make my blizzard stronger now that I'm looking about it. Um, that would have been a nice way to ration my blizzards, but... You live and learn, right? You live and learn. Or in Cutman's case, maybe you go back to the lab and learn. We'll see. But we've got to get through one Vulpix. We have a single potion. We're going to go ahead and try to poison it. It has poison immunity! This is not fair! What? <laughs> it no! looks like we had no hope either way. That's really funny. And Vulpix, as if to mock me uses Swords Dance to ensure that its next move is going to do far more than drain that last remaining six points of health. There it is, secret power, and we gotta say bye-bye to Cutman. He's gotta go back to Dr. Wily's fortress and get on the post waiting for Mega Man. Yeah, I'm telling you all, the lab is a place where you can get lost and get stuck and easy. Just take it from personal experience. I spent the first 15 minutes of this stuck in the <laughs> lab, but we are here now. Now we can watch this from scratch. We're going to give you the play-by-play -play of this. X-Water, I'm very excited here for the lab again. I know you're kind of, uh, but 
Zangus. I don't know if Zangus can go the distance. So no, I risk it. Get. I risk it on my on my low guys sometimes. I, my farthest run was I think a four a four sixty or a four eighty BST Pokemon. So I've mm -hmm. taken a couple chances. Um, Sky, we're in the lab. I chose last time. I think it's only right that I let you give the the command this time. Where should we go on this particular run? Which Pokeball should we take? Well, my champion came from Team Right, so let's go Team Right. Team Right. Team Right's not a fan, not a fan favorite in my stream, but I'm happy to <laughs> oblige. I always like to go through and see what the others are, so we're forgetting in the lab. This Makuhita gonna stay in the lab. We're gonna be going up. A oh, we're gonna be up against the Remoraid, an easy enemy to defeat. Little experience gained. And we're getting a Pupitar. All right, that's about a 400-ish, maybe 420 BST, somewhere in that range. But for this looks like something that could escape the lab. For the record, that is the best mod at the table. I'm just saying. It is the best mod at the table. And I'm going to name it Pod, because it looks like a little Metapod who got a slick paint job. All right, and now let's take a little look into its stats. It's bashful. It's got speed boost ability, always nice to see. Uh, 11 special defense, 15 defense, not terrible on the defenses and 11 attack. All right, so we've got a fast speed uh, and with high acceleration pod. Our moves, Blizzard Pound, Fury Attack, and Hyper Beam. What a suite of moves. Blizzard not going to be necessarily useful against the fish, but that Hyper Beam is tempting me. That Hyper Beam is absolutely tempting me. Oh, but this doesn't evolve until... This is a 55 evolve, yeah, right? Yeah, this That's is a Pokemon long. that doesn't evolve oh. until 55. Escaping this lab, I... If we escape it, I would absolutely be on team... On team pivot. But we'll see what happens. I'm going to take the big, the big play here and use the Hyper Beam. My logic being that Hyper Beam is going to use up two turns, but Pound at best in two turns is 80 power. Fury Attack is probably not going to be more than a total of 100 in, in its best case. Hyper Beam is still, across two turns, the highest damaging move that I have. We just got to pray that this Remoraid doesn't have a water or a grass type move, which is what our Pokemon is four times weak to. All right, Poison Gas is going to put a bit of a clock on us. We're about to have the recovery from Hyper Beam here. Hopefully, Remoraid doesn't do anything too dangerous. Shadow Ball, we might survive this. That is a physical move in this generation. That's our higher defense stat. All right, we survived it. Another speed boost. Now the last piece of the puzzle, all Pod has to do is land Hyper Beam. And if you're unfamiliar with this caveat of Pokemon in the lab, in this battle particularly, by default, you do not miss moves. So we're going to hit that Hyper Beam. The Pokemon is already under half health, meaning we know it's going to do over half its health and damage. And another escape, two in a row, almost unheard of in Kaizo Ironmon. Escaping two lab attempts in a row. Sky, good pick. The right gang got out. Yeah, absolutely. But you know what? We have to give credit to the pilot of this run. So again, especially if you are watching on YouTube as well, please follow that. It's twitch.tv slash xwater. An awesome person, an awesome streamer, and just really good at Pokemon. And I know, <laughs> I know what some of y'all are thinking, Sky, it's Iron Mon, a lot of it's out of your hands. No. You want to know what it takes to do Iron Mon really well? Because I've had folks ask me, you know, this is really difficult, regardless of difficulty. What do you do? A positive attitude goes a really long way. It does. You know, like, and knowledge of Pokemon is really important, but if you can keep your cool and not stay frustrated and just accept that sometimes stuff happens, you know, for, for lack of a better term, you're really going to do well and go far here in Iron Man, especially in Kaizo Iron Man. Yeah, you put in, the, you got to put in the time. You got to, you got to be diligent as well. It's, it is less of a game of execution and technical skill, whereas let's say a speed run of Mario 64 is sheer raw technical skill, being able to execute difficult tricks and precise inputs. This is the exact opposite side of the coin. It is about memory. It is about knowledge. It is about decision making. It is basically a ultimate game of tactics, knowing what moves to use when, uh, knowing what risks to take and keeping track of all of the information available to you as you proceed through the run can make a massive difference. Things like 
Even things like knowing that you defeated a Pokemon using a physical type move when your dif difference in level between the two of you was three levels gives you that information that in the future could be very vital. Now we are on the hunt for a replacement. As much as I love this pod for getting out of the lab, we probably aren't going to make it too far with this combination of moves and stats. So we're going to take a look around for something to replace it. This first bush has only two Pokemon available, and we've seen the Paris, we've seen the Igglybuff. Neither of those necessarily a great choice in Ironmon due to their incredibly low stats and the fact that... Well, they're going to need to evolve to do anything particularly impactful. And just as everything on their stat pool is random, once they evolve, their target evolution stat pool will be randomized as well. So nothing that they currently know in terms of high attack, low defense, etc., etc., will stay consistent. Now this! Now this I'm excited about! Rapidash! Rapidash is a 500 stat pool BST Pokemon. And level 8 is unfortunately one level higher than us, I noticed as, <laughs> as I was talking about it. So as much as I like it, I unfortunately cannot catch it. It is too strong. I mentioned this rule last run, but in Kaizo Ironmon, you can only catch a Pokemon to replace your Pokemon that is of equal or lower level. As us being level 7 out of the lab, we cannot catch a level 8. So we're going to have to keep searching around for either a level 6 Rapidash. This is also a really good Pokemon, a Wall Rain. This is somewhere around a 500 and... I think around a 500 BST. The Ice Water typing is really powerful. I'm going to take a chance here and use a Fury Attack because I don't think it's going to defeat it. It is illegal to defeat wild Pokemon in Kaizo Ironmon. But I would like to see what this Wall Rain can do if it has any valuable moves. Transform! Not necessarily what I was looking for. Doesn't really give me any sort of information other than the fact that there's one move I'm gonna need to get rid of at some point. That is an interesting, <laughs> an interesting placement. All right, let's go ahead and run from this battle and keep looking around. Hopefully we'll see another Rapidash, another Wall Rain. I would be excited for either of these Pokemon in this run. Um, both of them having a high, st high stat total. Both of them having a decent amount of moves to learn through their pool. They're both really good, have really good potential. They're like teenage Gohan in Dragon Ball Z. They've got a lot of potential. Just gotta hope they don't waste it. Karate Chop is a decent move. Karate Chop is a decent move. But that battle, despite maybe not showing too much information, actually told me a lot. And I'll run through it with you guys to explain what I just saw and what it means. That wall rain that just attacked us used Karate Chop, a 50 power fighting type move, a super effective move against our Pokemon, 100 power. And it did almost nothing. So we know that that walrus has an incredibly low physical attack stat. In addition to that, it attacked faster than our pod. And our pod has a speed stat of 21. Now, that means that at level 5, this walrus has more than 21 speed, telling me that its attack is incredibly low and its speed for its level is absurdly high. So high that it might not have left much of its stat distribution for the other stats in the stat pool which is going to lead me to wanting to not use it. I do not have a whole lot of faith in it as an option, unless it somehow happens to have incredibly high speed and incredibly high special attack. So I'm left with a decision right now. I found a level 6 Walrein. I know that it has crazy speed. I know that it's got low attack. Having an absolutely high amount of speed is not necessarily the worst thing in this point of the game, because if I catch this... I can still catch another Pokemon in a bush that I did not catch a Pokemon in. So this route that I'm currently in, I will not be able to catch another Pokemon here. But over in the forest and over at the um, route leading into the forest, there is still two areas of available Pokemon for me to choose from. So because of that, I am going to get the Walrus. I'm going to catch it. And we're going to see what it can do. Hopefully it has really high special attack and a way to deal 
some real damage. And I'm going to name it Wazi. That's the name of the walrus in uh, Banjo-Kazooie, I think. You I think? could be wrong, but yeah, it's a cute name either way, so we're going to go for it. Yeah, I typically, especially, uh, so as you play this and you go through so many seeds, like I'm almost on my 2000 seed with one only one clear so far, you tend to develop your own stories, right? That's part of the fun of Iron Mon, you know, you and your yeah. community make stories around names. So my uh, female uh, wallering is usually Winnie. I don't know why, I just kind of like the alliteration. Wazzy and Winnie, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've got a lot of I've got a lot of a lot of Pokemon. I'm gonna be given names like that are just they got stories behind them. But looking at this Wazi right now, we're level six. It's just as I was saying that speed stat is absurd. Twenty eight. Nothing is gonna be faster than us. However, that's not very valuable. Our HP is also very high at thirty one, and all of our other stats, as you can see, attack defense both very low special attack and special defense a little better still not really high enough to be usable heat wave is a great move and it's special unfortunately not enough here for us to stick with wazi as a main mon unless there's no other option so i am going to run into these bushes and take a quick look around to try and find some other option hopefully we find something valuable war turtle is a fun one because it's got a decent enough stat pool that it might it might work and you get to risk the evolution which is one of the easiest ways to lose a run but it can still be very 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 fun to to take that risk we'll we'll probably look for something different but if we are unable to find another really concrete option just for the gang for the enjoyment of it i might go for with this war turtle and See if we can pull off an evolution run because everybody loves an evolution run. It's the underdog story of a century. The same way people love Rocky Balboa, they're going to love this war turtle. Absolutely. So, so tell me overall, X Water, how are you feeling about this? It looks like it looks like you're you're not feeling it as much. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in this bush. The war turtle. How? Why? It, I just failed to run away from this level eight war turtle, which. Oh, but return is such a good. Oh my god, it's got really good moves. Oh, that's what I was wondering. Because I'm like, wait, is X Water family conflicted about something? Because again, there's a lot of drama in these runs, right? So it's like, yeah. Oh my goodness. I'm I'm mostly just just running and searching around. Uh, as as you know, there are a certain amount of Pokemon in every bush, mm -hmm. so I want to get as much information as possible before making the decision. But that was really vital information. So we know that re return is one of the best moves in the game. It's stronger the higher your friendship level with your Pokemon is up to 128 damage at max friendship, which is stronger, almost as strong as a Hyper Beam with none of the drawback. It's incredible. Return is an absolutely incredible move. And it did a lot. Oh, and that's a no, that's a good point. I... <laughs> This is a situation where I might be making a bad move, but my heart, my heart tells me to catch this Arcanine, the highest legal stat total Pokemon available in Kaizo Ironmon, as legendaries, pseudo legendaries, all of them are illegal to catch. 555 is the stat total for Arcanine, a solid 100 above that Zangoose from last run. Now, Arcanine has the downside of unfortunately not ever learning a single move as a lot of the stone evolution pokemons will will do and i was really keen on catching it when i first saw it because i had one run with an arcanine in the past that did really well so i've got a bit of a i bit of, got a bit of an emotional attachment to it but i saw it use mimic i saw it use future sight and that is not going to be enough gas in the tank for a pokemon who doesn't learn any moves so as much as i want it i'm gonna have to I'm going to have to not take the Arcanine. You just say you get emotionally attached to your Pokemon, X-Water. I do, oh, I do. No. You don't. No. <laughs> I, I like to wait until after Brock to really develop the attachment because, you know, you got to you gotta be ready for that heartbreak. Brock's really the big, the big first wall of the run. Really, really hard to get past. Once you make it to around the mid game, if you've got a good enough Mon, you typically have a decent chance of of making some serious moves but brock five pokemon that are all about matching the same level as you not an easy challenge to overcome oh 
absolutely not. So, hmm. So now we're in the woods. So, Axefire, you're very much a shopper. Like, you do not want to leave the, what we call, like, the farming area until you are absolutely satisfied with your Pokemon. Absolutely, yeah. I'm. I am. I am a pivot hunter. I, I call the switch up here the pivot. I like to make sure that I am exploring all my options, because in the lab you don't get the choice. You you choose the the spot and you take what you're given. But when you're out in the wild, you get to look. You get to see what they can do. You get a general idea of their abilities. And while this, while Wazzy, the Walrein, and I'm gonna call this. Um, I'm gonna call this one Dilly. And while Ar Armaldo, the Armadillo, has a really high stat pool, they both give me, in one run, a chance at a really decent Pokemon. And this one, unfortunately, is a little bit suspicious. Really low special defense. Decent speed. Oh, really good defense. Low attack. So depending on the moves, we don't have a single special move. Parish Song, one of those scary moves. Definitely not one we're going to be using. And yeah, we've kind of run, we've kind of exhausted all of our options here. I could go back out into the forest out there and catch the war turtle at this point. That is still a legal play. However, I think we're just going to run, 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 run and go down the down enemy lane. Try fighting this uh, bug trainer. See how we do and put our faith in Dilly. Really? Really? I... I was getting nervous when running bug Pokemon. You know, I have, always feel like they're susceptible to so many things. On that note, though, uh, did you did we cover how evolutions work yet in Iron Man X Water? I did talk a little bit about it. I got really into it with a Volpix that I was thinking about catching. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, the most common way to evolve in Iron Man is if you find a stone by the end of the forest, because stone evolutions are fairly harmless. The real challenging evolutions are either the ones that evolve at really high levels, like 50, 55 or et cetera, or the friendship-based evolutions. So I don't know if you caught my most recent run that almost finished Dexwater, but I started out with a uh, 455 Golbat, which doesn't evolve except for friendship. Friendship's very mm -hmm. complicated. I can't even entirely explain how friendship happens. Just know that it does indeed happen. But that Golbat evolved into an Aerodactyl as it shares flying. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and uh, it almost completed. You know, you want to talk about heartbreak. It died at the champion on the first Pokemon. I went to go use X Defend, and unfortunately, the opponent's Espeon critted on Rock Slide. And oh, because of a that's crit, brutal. I lost it. I was like, no! So yeah. getting back to that emotional attachment chat, please emotionally attach to your Iron Man at your own discretion. I won't tell you not to, but, but... Uh, it is a very, very uh, difficult thing when you absolutely fall in love with a Pokemon. You know, you get you get your viewers and your community that's kind of like, they make the fan art and everything. And it's just, it's a process. It's a real emotional process. It, it's, it takes yeah. a toll on you, you know? My my best mon was an Exploud. Uh, it made it to the, it made it to the Champions League. It made it to the second Pokemon in the Elite Four. And unfortunately, didn't didn't go all the way. But it gained a lot of lore. It had its own theme song for the battles. In any boss battle, we had its own theme song. And I got a little a little greedy here. I just you know I figured the the bug didn't have a whole lot of gas in the tank. And I'm curious. I want to see what the turtle can do. So um, I'm gonna name it Great Bay in honor of Majora's Mask Turtle because I don't know what the turtle's name is. But I know it lives in the Great Bay. I love it after the uh, enormous turtle and that. Yeah. It's cute. All right, 19 health. You know what? This is actually not terrible. No? We've got a pretty high attack stat, really good speed, no special attack. And this is what we call a, a perfect attacking spread, or at least what I call having one of them really high and one of them really low. In, it, it essentially leaves your stats to be freely distributed in areas that are are most valuable because you want both of your defenses relatively high, but having a low special attack stat and no special moves does not hurt us in any way. We've got only strong physical moves right now, and honestly, this is actually has a chance. The speed is a little bit too high for my liking, but 
We'll see. I'm going to go heal it, and we're going to take... Actually, is it at full health? It is. We're going to give it a chance. This is the last Pokemon I'm allowed to catch. I've exhausted all of my options, as I typically do on our second <laughs> run of the day. Uh, it's so funny. This is... Um, this is definitely something that happens a lot in... Oh, there's a water stone. Fun. This is something that happens a lot in my stream. I will definitely take my time in choosing the perfect Pokemon and looking for the perfect pivot when I'm approaching this first trainer. Are you a pivot hunter or do you like to just try to get to this point very quickly? Oh, I roll mons and basically meme. Uh, that's how I end up with all the weird runs. That's how I ended up with an Altaria on the Elite Four and the Golbat that evolved into an Aerodactyl. We definitely do some different things in Iron Mine and over my stream. And that's like the beauty of it, right? Everybody yeah. has their own tactics and their own way of doing so. That's why you got to make sure to follow literally all the folks in the Iron Mon community because, oh, no. This is bad, yeah. Oh, no. This is bad. We oh. Literally, the Pokemon that we just set free has come back, has come back, and it asked me, why don't you love me? <laughs> Here it is, dealing the damage. It has color change. We just changed its typing to... To, to normal by using a normal attack and now we're changing it to bug we're gonna go back and forth like that unfortunately with perish song and the sheer damage that armaldo has we're not gonna be able to go any further the war turtle unfortunately going back to great bay so that is an aspect especially of kaizo iron Mon, that we haven't covered so you're not allowed to swap between pokemon right because you have your main and then you have your hm friend well, Correct. the problem is that if you get into any fight with six, uh, we'll call it four to six Pokemon, and, and that is AKA most of the important fights in this, you know, it's your Giovanni's, your gym leaders, your elite four. If you get perish songed at all in the first three Pokemon, you're probably gonna take a game over just to perish song. It is the most powerful Iron Man mechanic alone. Yeah, absolutely. All right, what are you thinking? Well, you're using the, uh, just a quick addition. We're using the quality of life uh, mod for this as well. So when I caught those new Pokemon, I'm sure some of the chat noticed, but it immediately replaces my current Mon with the new Mon, really forcing the player to never ever have even one more in the party than available, which is an interesting mechanic as well. But uh, you know what? We've given right a chance. We've given middle a chance. Left is the only the only ball we haven't taken today. So we're going to give that one a chance and see who is being forgotten in the lab. The happy little seal. Our enemy going to be a Jolteon, Ooh. an absolutely amazing Pokemon. Kind of wishing I went right, gang, here. <laughs> but instead, going to be left with the little slimy boy. I told you, Team Right. That's where the chance It would have been from. a really strong pick this run for sure. Oh, yeah. And Ghostbusters, got to give it the right name. Going to call him Slimer. So, X And we'll see how we stand up to this Jolteon. Yes. Just so we know, how often have you been doing Iron Man lately? I know you've been doing a variety of content, which is always awesome to watch. And I, again, recommend folks to follow you at twitch.tv slash Xwater. But um, how often have you been doing this lately? And are you thinking about doing any other Iron Man related challenges in the near future? Um, yeah, so I have been Iron Monning a lot. Actually, I took a small break after hitting 1,000 attempts of Kaizo for a new challenge that um, I invented. A community member of mine, Zenny3D, helped me bring it to fruition called the Chaos Carp Challenge. And how that worked was it was the vanilla game, but my starting, my starting Pokemon was a Magikarp. And this Magikarp learned a new move at every single level and the rule, the main rule of this run is that every level that it learns a new move, you delete your oldest move. So if my Magikarp learned Bubble Beam at level 10, it forgets it at 15. If I learn Fire Blast at level 5, I'm losing it at level 9, so on and so forth. It was a really wacky challenge. It took about 25 attempts to get the clear on that. But it was a lot of fun. Uh, now that it's completed, I'm back to Iron Mon. I did spend a, the last week kind of dedicated more to variety, but I am back on the Iron Mon grind this week, moving back into it. So pretty much I stream daily, uh, and daily I typically have at least a couple hours of Iron Mon content. There are some exceptions to that, but yeah, it, it, it's a pretty strong feature in the stream. 
Yes, and again, I I enjoy watching your stream, Max Potter. It's uh, one of the many reasons why I wanted to feature you today. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you play more Kaisa. Oh my gosh, did you just defeat a Jolteon with a Gulpin? Oh, I don't know how it happened. Slimer's got the sauce. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> this is incredible. Slimer was able to confuse the Jolteon and the Jolteon ended up hitting itself enough times in confusion and missing all of its attacks against us. See, in the lab, we will never miss it, but it can miss us. It's not fair, but I'm not gonna argue with it. And we've got the coveted level nine. Almost never happens out of the lab. It is very, very rare. Jolteon has a high experience yield, so we were able to get level nine. X-Water, this is epic. Three for three out of the lab. Seriously? I know, this is, in this is incredible. <laughs> There's another community member in my channel, Jeliski, who uh, actually has kept track of the stats, getting out of the lab and like what's being chosen, having a like it's so in depth. And like we have the numbers to prove that the left gang ex escapes most frequently. The right gang has the middle amount of escape attempt success. The middle gang, unfortunately, has the least amount, my favorite gang, but the middle gang has gone farther than any other gang in our stats. We've got about a 25% escape rate out of, after after um, over a thousand runs at this point, yes. with bug type Pokemon having the least level of success escaping the lab. I do want to give credit. I'm really glad uh, chat mentioned this as well as UX Water. Uh, the person who came up with Iron Man and has put yes. so much tender loving care into these rules. Uh, that is twitch.tv slash I ate your pie. That is all one word. Yes, that is I ate your pie crunched as one word. Uh, please be sure to give pie a follow as well. I'm going to put that in chat because pie has taken so much time and care to the rules and listens to his community just Overall, an impressive amount of work has gone into this amazing person. Also, the Iron Man Discord, the Iron Man rules that I've been mm -hmm. putting in the chat. So again, big shout out to Diet Your Pie for all of the hard work put into this. Absolutely, yeah. Pie came up with something real special here. It has expanded so hard. So many people have been it's it's its own it's honestly its own its own beast now. You know, everyone's playing Kaizo Iron Man and across the various generations of Pokemon. We have all sorts of community members who are building out tools specifically for the Ironmon challenge. We have tons of resources created. And pretty much every game at this point has its own list of, you know, various guides as to like where all the hidden items are and, you know, how to progress through the game smoothly and what's recommended to do in what order in this challenge, all that stuff. The Ironmon community is incredible and I know everyone says that when they're on GDQ about their community, but it is an accurate statement. It is an accurate statement. All right, now I feel so bad right now because Slimer did such a tremendous job escaping the lab. Really brought out every ounce of power it had in its little slimy body. But Slimer is, at the end of the day, Slimer is a level 9 Pokemon with... Uh, what is what is Gulpin's base stat total with a 300 base stat total and evolves at level 26? It is unfortunately just a little bit too difficult to find success with a Pokemon like this. So we are going to have to abandon it in cold blood. Unfortunately, going to have to leave the store and go get some go get some milk and never see it again. Water, why do you to put it that way now i feel sad <laughs> i you know what it's because i gotta be realistic because i could give it a nice happy twist tell everybody it's going to a farm but the chat deserves to know oh, no. the reality we are abandoning it no. <laughs> it loves us and we're forgetting about it oh no x water <laughs> iron mon is uh it's a cruel cruel game Oh. All right, we've seen Gorbis, which is an okay option, and we've seen Makuhita. There is one more Pokemon that spawns in that bush, but it is somewhat of a rare encounter. So we're going to go just uh, scout for some more information above here, see if we can find a nice quicker pivot. Uh, Gorbis is definitely a decent option at about 480 BST, plus being a water type, one of the better typings to have as you're typing in this game, specifically this generation. 
Um, it's something we mentioned, and it's something that I'm going to pause for to note that this Wigglytuff just used a stab Hyper Beam, same type attack bonus. Hyper Beam being a 150 power move, and the same type attack bonus giving a 1.5 times modifier to the damage. That was a 225 power move right there that Slimer managed to survive through. So, again... Amazing Pokemon. It has done nothing but it has done nothing but be absolutely incredible for us, but we are going to continue to search for a replacement for it. <laughs> um Yes, back on what I was saying. I have forgotten what I was saying, so I will not go back to it. No further questions. <laughs> uh, the wiggly tough totally distracted me of whatever I was talking about. I mean it is cute. It is cute. Oh, goodness. Oh, I was I was talking about... Yes, now I'm remembering. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to bring up the, the fact that um, the attack split in this Pokemon generation hadn't happened yet. So it's something mo a lot of players are familiar with, but um, every move has either, uh, is either weighed against the attack stat or the special attack stat. And in this generation, moves that have punch in it might not necessarily be a physical move moves are, are are choose they choose their attack stat based off of their typing so thunder punch ice punch fire punch despite all being punches are special moves and that is true for all of the types that share a type with any evolution and dragon types those are the special type typings in generation three so any any fire electric water psychic dark ice and um, dragon move and grass is going to be a special type move. Everything else being physical, including things like ghost, a move like shadow ball that you might expect to be a special attack is in this generation actually physical. It's a lot to, it's a lot to keep track of, but keeping the evolution rule in mind, it helps you kind of have a better grip on it. What makes water typing so good is it only has two weaknesses being electric and grass and both of them are special so if you find a, a water type pokemon with a good special defense that's a really good sign because your two critical weaknesses are a little more protected and you can get away a lot of the times with a water type pokemon with a slightly lower physical defense because of that whereas a, most other pokemon typings will have weaknesses that spread across both both physical and special you know fire type pokemon are weak to ground but they're also weak to water and that is on both sides of the attack spectrum man we are just not running into anything uh too wild over here i think that gorbis is is probably gonna be is probably gonna be the the pokemon that we take I'm going to run to the right of the forest, pick up that last item, and we'll probably from there go catch the Gorbis, see if it can do anything valuable, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, be, we'll be running down the bug trainer fight for our third time today, hopefully making it past it. That would be a PB on the day, too, and folks have been asking, like, what is the end goal? Just as far as X-Water can make it, because we're not going to finish this. This is... Honestly, if everything goes right, about a 10 hour plus run. It's fairly long. Mm -hmm. It's very, very long. There's a lot of grindy elements in the middle because you need to fight a lot of trainers. You need to get to as high of a level as you can. You can't fight wilds. That's part of the rules. And the final trainer, the final rival, has a level 95 Pokemon. And you're probably only going to be about level... I don't know, 85, 86, somewhere around there, maybe closer to 90 if you found rare candies and you got lucky along the way. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of situations where you lose out on potential levels as well, because as you go through the game, there's rules about re-entering dungeon type zones, things like caves and towers and and general uh, dungeon, dungeon locations. There's a no re-entry rule. So if we make it to Mount Moon, we're going to want to defeat as many enemy trainers as possible to collect the highest amount of experience. But at the same time, if we go to Mount Moon and we get low health or we get poisoned or some sort of bad status condition comes down and, 
and we're left in a position where we need to escape Mount Moon without finishing all the trailers, trainers, that is experience that we will never see again. We will never get back. And that happens a lot of the time in Kaizo Ironmon and in Ultimate Ironmon as well. Sometimes you'll have to you'll have to just leave some experience off the table. So the the better your Pokemon is early game, the better your moves spread, the more capable having resistance to status conditions can help a lot. Ooh, that was a lot of damage from Steel Wing. I like to see that. I hope we are able to catch this Gorbis. Stay in the ball. It didn't stay in the ball. Okay, we got one more try here. Hopefully it doesn't hit us. Swagger is a risky move. I'm thinking about it as, uh, from the perspective of once we catch Gorbis, how I feel about having some of these moves. Swagger boosts the enemy's attack tremendously, but it also confuses them. Dynamic Punch, another really risky move. It does a lot of damage and it confuses guaranteed, but is only 50% accurate. Stay the ball! Stay the ball! All right, we're getting really lucky that this Gorbis is missing a lot. The Steel Wings so far are the only, what I would consider the only safe move that we've seen this Gorbis use, but the amount of damage it did, it makes me want to catch it. Wing Attack as well. And a critical hit. Slimer, my boy! Slimer, no! no! You know what, X-Water? I'm gonna say that it heard you saying, okay, I'm gonna abandon this Pokemon. That is exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Slimer, yeah, you know what? I, feel, I gotta feel a little bad about it. I'm sorry, Slimer. <laughs> That's the lore right there for how it becomes the ghost in Ghostbusters. That was exactly how it happened. It unfortunately didn't make it far enough in an Ironmon run. And then Bill Murray is going to be hitting it up Luigi's Mansion style in just, a, in just a few years. All right, we're back in the lab. We've chosen all three. I'm going to give it again to my good friend, the middle gang. So we're going we're gonna to forget about the right side. The spider is staying in the lab. We're up against the ugly fish, Feebas, and we've got a little swine up. Again, right side proved to be the best possible option in the lab. Let's hope that... Swinub is able to hold its own against this fish. I'm going to call you, um... I'm going to call you Molby. I like Molby. All right. Feebas is a, is a pretty low BST Pokemon. This is going to come down to moves, I think. We've got an okay... Got an okay spread. Lightning Rod's not terrible considering we're a ground type. Lightning Rod's kind of a useless ability in this generation as it doesn't negate. Oh, we have Sketch. That's fun. Sketch is a move that lets you permanently copy one, uh, the last used move by the opponent. You will have that move forever. And it can be very, very, very fun to use. Very, very fun. Um, Sketch is probably the most valuable move you can give to a Pokemon with enough speed to make sure it moves first. Let's see. Um, neither of these options particularly strong between Metal Claw and Sludge here, but if we get the poison, that would be really good against Feebas. And there it is! Molby with an absolutely amazing performance. So, um, I, I will give you all a piece of advice here. Don't main Feebas. Just, I, I would not recommend <laughs> it. Even if it has Dragon Rage, even if it has like a move that's just like a gimme at the beginning, do not main Feebas. Do not main Magic Herb. Do not main Sunkern. You may not have a choice at the beginning, but that doesn't mean it has to be your main. So just, memeing is good. Not so much on the fish, and there we go. X water proving okay, so we don't get out of the lab every single time. All over Not the every record, time. If you would have gotten out of there, I've been like, X water, what's your secret? Because I need to know that. Yeah, that's that's a, a three in a row stretch is is not seen often. That is that is insane. That is beautiful. I do want to remind you all that X water is a quote unquote Iron Mon professional slash expert. So. uh Again, I have full faith in what X-Water's doing. Go Team Mario. Come on, X-Water. 
All right, all right. And you know what? I'm going to switch it up. I'm going from the top as well. The bottom, we're done. We're going from top right. Forgetting about the whale mert, staying in the lab forever. Our opponent is going to be this Flygon. Um. If we get an Ice-type move, it's going to be an absolutely amazing amount of experience. Oh. We've got Houndoom, an incredibly power. This is a great Mon to be, to be, to be blessed with. Both middle and right, strong picks. I actually like Houndoom a little bit more here. I'm going to call it... Uh, I'm going to call it... The Doom Dog. It's the Doom Dog. Oh, it's the Doom <laughs> Doe now, because I can't spell. Okay, that's Doom Lore. <laughs> See, chat? Now you can develop your own lore here. That's Doom Doe now. <laughs> it's the Doom Doe. <laughs> All right, we've got keen eye. We will never lose any accuracy. We've got a lot of health, a lot of speed, a decent amount of special attack, and water pulse, which unfortunately, as I'm thinking about it, the dragon type on Flygon resists. The ground type is weak, so it's going to be a neutral move. Our best move here against the Flygon, going to be Luster Purge, hopefully lowering the enemy's defense. Our special stat is the better of our attacking stats, so I think there's a chance. That being said, we are also weak to ground type. If it has a ground type move, we are not feeling very lucky. All right. Here we go. Sand Stream. I'm pretty sure that's the vanilla ability for Flygon. Let's give it a chance. Luster. Okay, so the Flygon actually ended up being even faster than us. That's interesting. It does have three levels, so not... Not incredibly unreasonable. Let's see. An okay amount of damage if we get the stat drop. Yes! All right, that's great. Going to make our next attack a little more powerful. Hopefully, Flygon doesn't bust out any really powerful, super effective moves right now. We are moving faster this turn. It must be a speed tie and a speed tie between Pokemon. It's a 50-50 chance which one is going to move first. That's another stat drop, meaning our next attack should be able to complete the battle. It's random, 50-50 chance which one of us goes first here. If the Flygon goes first and uses a powerful enough move, we're in trouble. If we go first, we win. And it looks like we're about to win and escape the lab with Doomdo. Thank goodness. Wow. That's going to give us so much experience, too. That's a level 9 lab escape right there. Can we just hear it for X-Water's play-by? I did not want to interrupt. X-Water, that was awesome. And Psybeam. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Psybeam's a real nice ability to pick up. 20 PP, really powerful. Chance at confusion. Luster Purge is going to stay with us for now, even though it's only 5 PP. I don't mind getting rid of Teleport, as it doesn't really serve much of a function in Iron Mon. So even though we're uh, stacking up two of the same type of move, Psybeam's still a really strong move to use. This is an interesting Pokemon we're working with as I look at it. Our defenses are kind of low. Our HP is insanely high, but our special attack is almost good enough. It's this is like a this is like on the fence of a an on the fence Pokemon where you almost have a good enough spread, but like you look at its stats and you know that it doesn't necessarily have end game potential. It might be Brock, but I don't think this thing has end game potential. Really? Hmm. Oh. I think the there's a little too much HP and a little bit too much of a lack of special defense. With us being weak to water type and to um Dark is weak is Dark weak to ghost? No, Dark is weak to fighting and and, and bug. Yeah, fighting and bug. Uh I did want to let you know, uh, X Water, that follow me does have priority. So if your opponent uses it, your opponent will oh, always go first there. That makes sense. That makes sense. I was worried about nothing then. We had that in the bag. Uh, the goal is to just get as far as possible. If X Water manages to get past Brock, we'll keep going until the time elapses. It's, um, I don't want to say it's like Versa Kill, because we're not going to Versa Kill the run per se. This is just more of a showcase, and once the time's over, remember, we're not the only show today. There is a bot on after this, so once we are finished here up to the estimate, uh, please be sure to stay tuned for that. We have a lot of excellent programming here this week on gdq hotfix and i am honored again to have x water here tonight i am having a fantastic time with you me too so much fun i love the kaizo iron mon action and it's really fun to have someone to like hang out with and talk to uh as like 
obviously I usually have a chat, but like in, in voice chat, you know, it's nice to have some co-commentary action going on with it. Absolutely. And one of the things that really like, one of the things that really drove me into Kaizo Iron Man is I'd always thought of Pokemon as a game that was a little easier. And yeah. this game has taught me, honestly, that it's not as easy as it looks. And there's actually a lot of depth to Pokemon. Like, you don't think about it, but if you're like me and you're a Gen 1, Gen 2, or, you know, kind of back in the day kind of thing, energy, um, this teaches you that there's so much more to Pokemon than meets the eye. Mm -hmm. So many things where we're still learning. I'm still learning after almost 2,000 seeds of things I, I never knew about Pokemon. Uh, remember that this is Gen 3, even though it has the nice Gen one coat of paint. We're playing by Gen 3 rules, technically. So, yeah, I mean, I want to know your story, X Water. What drove you to Iron Man? I was watching Pi do it a lot, and I, I'm in the same boat. I kind of, you know, had that that thought that Pokemon, as as I grew up, matured, played more games, you know, streaming as streaming full time has me playing games so much that I have gotten to a point where I found the like the traditional Pokemon playstyle maybe a little too easy, not challenging enough. So seeing this and seeing the excitement of, you know, not knowing what move you're gonna learn and every and not knowing what you're gonna evolve into, not knowing what the enemies are gonna have, it threw so much it threw so much chaos into a traditional Pokemon run and it made it feel a lot more like a roguelike where, you know, you're you're constantly restarting and trying out new builds and uh, experimenting with new techniques and really, really just trying to adapt to an incredible amount of challenges being thrown at you. It was just so much fun. I think um, a good little bit of RNG is always really, really fun. You know, it's always a good time to try and overcome to try and overcome the odds. Or even when something good happens, it's like, oh my goodness, I just learned flamethrower on my fire type pokemon this is going to be an exciting run kind of deal there's always so much so many extreme ups and extreme downs that it just becomes a really good time if you're someone who doesn't get like discouraged easily it's a lot of fun so all right i've decided to stick with doom doe for this battle Ooh. we're jumping in head first and we got mr mime we're gonna go for the water pulse so yeah, um, actually a note about Mr. Mime for folks wanting to get into Iron Man. Uh, don't let Mr. Mime's low BST or base stat total get to you because Mr. Mime learns an unbelievable amount of moves. Sometimes it's okay to have a slightly lower BST, but if you learn a lot of moves, that can make that just that much more optimal. So it's a balancing act in Iron Man for sure. And again, just remember there's no right or wrong way you will make mistakes while playing this, but that's one of the best parts, right? You're gonna learn mistake from your mistakes and you will go onto your future and saying, okay, I remember what happened here and there, and you're just gonna find yourself growing through the process. And that's so much fun. Absolutely. Yeah, Mr. Mime is one that I've, I haven't had a run with Mr. Mime yet, but Mr. Mime is very, very, very powerful uh, in the sense that the biggest problem in Kaizo Iron Mon is the moves, because in Ultimate Iron Mon, you're allowed to use the TMs. There's all sorts of move tutors around the map. There's so many ways to build your move set out in Ultimate Iron Mon. In Kaizo Iron Mon, you've got whatever you learn, and you've got the eight gym TMs, and that's it. You are not allowed to get TMs from any other source, moves from any other source. So Mr. Mime becomes an incredibly viable pick when it comes down to Kaizo Ironmon. A little bit lower on the stats, but sometimes knowing Ice Beam and Flamethrower and Thunderbolt in the same Pokemon can be worth dropping your stats by just a little bit. We made it past that first bug trainer, which is really nice to see. The dog definitely has a little bit of um, a little bit of a lack in defense, but the high HP hopefully gonna gonna curb that issue. And we've got a decent enough special attack stat that I think my previous doubt in the dog may have been unwarranted. I We're going to have to see how the forest goes. We've got four trainers remaining in the forest, a rematch with the rival before we go and uh, roll up to the gym. But as it's looking, between having Water Pulse and two very good psychic moves, I feel kind of okay. 
That's a shame to find a scope lens on the ground there. Scope lens increases your critical hit ratio when a held, but as I mentioned earlier today, Kaizo Ironmon, you are not allowed to hold any items other than berries in battles. So we unfortunately cannot use that item. In Ultimate Ironmon, that scope lens would have made this next battle feel a lot, lot, lot better. We got the confusion on that water pulse. Fantastic. The Metacham is going to hit us, but it is a fire type move. Not going to be very effective. Going to give us another chance. It's going to take us three hits of water pulse here to get this Metacham down. Hopefully, it hits itself here and saves us a little bit of damage. Okay, it'll heat wave again. We're going to lose a little bit more HP, but we've only got one more Pokemon to take down on this trainer. Hopefully, something weak to either water or psychic make our day a little easier. Here we go, the doggy getting another level, level 12. Mm -hmm. Let's see that stat gain. We got three speed, four health, and everything else a little bit less exciting. <laughs> we'll see how we proceed on to the next level. Again, four health, but three special attack this time into the 30s. I'm really liking what I'm seeing on the special attack front right now, plus being as fast as we are. If we manage to learn dark or fire type moves on this dog, we're gonna be very happy. Now, this is a normal type Fury Swipes. Um, Sky, how do you feel about Fury Swipes here? Would would I, I've got I've got a, a general thought right now, but I'm curious to know what you would do in this situation with learning this move. I would get rid of Detect here because we're not doing any kind of stall strategy based on burn, confusion, poison, etc. And Detect's not going to do much for us. We're probably going to get rid of Fury Swipes later. It is our quote-unquote fourth move and the first one we will dispose of when we learn more, but Detect's not doing much for us here. That's true. Now, while I, I definitely agree with you, I'm actually kind of leaning towards not keeping Fury Swipes myself strictly because of the risk of two turn moves such as Dig and Fly, but more so Dig. If we see Dig, that's going to ruin our entire day. We're weak to Dig. We don't have great defense. And Detect is going to be a free shield from those types of moves. With us having 20 PP on Psybeam, 20 PP on Water Pulse, I don't imagine Fury Swipes ever being used in a meaningful way, whereas Detect, even though incredibly low chance, being able to defend against two-turn moves like Fly and Dive and Dig and stuff like that is gonna, gonna, gonna be the reason I decide to keep it. I mean, that's fair. That's totally sound logic. Yeah. But yeah, I but that's one of the fun things about Ironmon is we both see we both have our our different approach there and we both have our different strategies for how we would kind of play out that scenario cuz both of those moves at the end of the day they're 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 fourth moves. They're not going to change too much in the grand scheme of things. And you were thinking about pivoting from Doomdo. I know. Doomdo <laughs> is absolutely making moves. Absolutely making moves. I do want to let folks know, if you're looking at this thinking, hey, I want to give this a try, the Iron Monk community is very welcome. Uh, it is one of the best communities I've ever been a part of, and I would highly encourage, again, to take a look at the link for the Iron Monk rules and... If you're watching on YouTube and thinking, okay, well, I don't have Twitch chat to get that from, uh, twitch.tv slash I ate your pie, all one word, and that will get you possibly to the uh, link to the Ironmon Discord from there. Pie can point you in the right direction, so please feel free to do that. And again, everybody has been nothing but friendly here through this. So again, come join us. It's a good time. Absolutely. Big vouch. And I know what we're doing right now looks a little intimidating. There's a lot of rules. There's a lot of resetting, but the Kaizo Ironmon is the hardest version. There are other general tiers of rule sets where Ultimate is a little bit easier than this, and Vanilla Ironmon is the most approachable of them. It's a great way to get your feet in the water, uh, so to speak. So if you're looking at it, you think it's cool, you want to give it a shot, a nice Vanilla Ironmon attempt is a great way to jump in for the first time if you find it at all, uh, if it sparks your curiosity. All right, I think Cascoon is part poison, I hope. Nope. No, I think it's just raw bug type. Okay, so that Psybeam won't be super effective, but three damage from overheat, not gonna do 
not gonna do a ton of damage to us. <laughs> well, yeah, we're talking about resetting in terms of the chat. I'll tell you, it's not that different from uh, regular speedrunning, so to speak. You know, this is more of a challenger run, but that's how speedrunning and challenge runs go, right? Like, there's gonna be resetting, Absolutely. there's gonna be a process. If you're into any of that, but you like it different every single time, unlike vanilla speedruns where you just kind of have to get down what's going on within the game. If you like a different experience, challenge runs like this are really awesome. And this is where we kind of intersect with ADAF show Challenger Approaching. So if you're enjoying the challenge run feel, please be sure to check out ADAF show Challenger Approaching right here on GDQ Hotfix as well. Again, there's something for everyone here on GDQ Hotfix, and that's what I love about it. There is such a wide variety. It's great. I love, I love the programming that's been on Hotfix. It's been so cool to see it growing and, and so much awesome content being offered. Oh, glad you didn't get poisoned there, Hexmarker. I was feeling nervous for that. I was a little worried too, yeah. I was a little Poison. bit. I was shaking a little bit. I'm really happy we got that critical hit on the Bell Awesome. Definitely a high stat Pokemon. I was a little worried about it. The Cyndaquil, not so much. But that poison was a bit of a risk. We're now three Pokemon in. This is kind of the point where I'm starting to feel like we've got a pretty clean route to get to the rival. The rival refight, which is just to the left of where we currently are on the way to Victory Road, which obviously you can't cross without your eight gym badges, but still we can head over there to refight the rival after we take on these next two trainers in the forest. So we're gonna do that first, get all the experience we can to prepare us for Brock and I will likely take a quick second to search when Houndoom learns its next move because another move would be very useful. We have currently Psychic and Water, which gives us a decent amount of coverage across Pokemon types, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be upset about learning something like Crunch, a nice same type attack bonus dark type move, maybe a nice little fire punch or a flamethrower. You know, I'm not trying to be too greedy about the moves I want, but it'd be pretty cool. Oh, absolutely. So um, at this point, I, I love having this discussion. We're kind of settled in a main mon, so to speak, at this point. I just wonder, what moves are you looking for? Probably uh, crunch and bite for the dark moves, certainly. But beyond that, what are you looking for? Yeah, that's um, definitely want to stick with the special moves. Um, I think it's, oh, that's really nice. PP up and it is one of the most valuable items you can find in the iron mon attempts. Um, an ice type move when you have a special attacker is always valuable, being that it's good against four or five types, including flying and grass and ground and um, and dragon as well. It is a way to deal with dragons who there aren't too many of them, but they are the strongest BST Pokemon typically. So getting an ice beam or an ice punch or even a blizzard, which isn't my favorite option due to its low accuracy, all that would be really nice still. Um, and then for a fourth move between all that, because I want fire, I want dark, I want ice. I would need to ponder a little bit what we're lacking with that. There's actually a lot of really great Ironmon resources that calculate your move set coverage. Um, so if I use one of those, I type in, I put in ice, psychic, and fire. That leaves only nine Pokemon that we are not super effective or not neutrally effective against in some way, which is really nice. The ones that we seem to struggle with, the majority in that scenario are water types. So I'm guessing that last move I'd want would probably be something lightning or grass in that scenario. Also too, before I forget, because that's the other thing, chat. Time flies when you're playing out your month, so I want to make sure we get into this. Xwater, do you want to talk a little bit about what else you do besides Iron Mon? What do you stream? Uh, what are your favorite things to speed run? Just anything that involves any Absolutely. projects outside of streaming. I would yeah. love to hear more about you as a runner, as here on Random Number Generation, we are more about the runners than the run itself. Yeah, I would love I'd love to talk a little bit about what I've been doing. I'm actually just uh, on the tail end of my five-year partner anniversary. We just had that last Wednesday. We did a big stream event to celebrate it, all sorts of content. We did uh, a 1cc Mario Kart races. We played uh, some cool mods of games. We played Banjo-Kazooie, Jiggies of Time, checked out all sorts of variety-centered content. 
But in my typical day to day, I like to do a lot of various uh, higher challenge type runs and creative kind of twists on games. In the past, I've done like some chat centered games with Super Mario Maker where um, the chat room gets to join teams and based on my performance and the levels, some teams perform better than others and end up getting wins and, and, and defeating other foes and all that stuff. Um, I'm really big into the 3D Marios. A lot of people might know me for what I call the perfect run, named after the level in uh, Mario Galaxy 2, where last year I completed Super Mario Bros. 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy in a row, all three of them, without taking a single point of damage. It was about an eight-month journey to get there. I went, I beat the first game damage list, I did the second one, I did them all individually, and then I bunched them together and did it all in one go, and it ended up being one of the most exciting moments in my stream career. So a lot of 3D Mario content. I've got a history speedrunning Mario 64, a history speedrunning Mario Odyssey. I've done a lot of challenge runs of both of those games. I've done a lot of Breath of the Wild content, speedruns, challenge runs, all that sorts of stuff. Um, I just am entering, again, my Ironmon phase. I like to call them seasons. I don't know about you, but I go in and out of like phases in my stream where I get really like hyper fixated on a particular uh, on a particular game genre or challenge. And right now we're in Ironmon season. So I, I've been doing a lot of Ironmon and I work in a little bit of variety all around that to still keep up with like what's releasing and things I'm interested in. So, yeah, I think it's a it's a nice balance. We strike a nice balance between variety and then challenges and speedruns um, while always trying to keep a good focus on high energy and high skill gameplay. That's 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 I'd say what my focus would be as a streamer. Yeah, and again, I see a lot. I see so many of your awesome emotes in chat tonight, Xwater. I want to thank everyone who is here from Xwater's community today and also from the Iron Mom community. You all have been showing up and representing, and we really appreciate that here. And it just makes me want to, you know, you're talking about seasons, Xwater. I definitely would love to have more Iron Mom. Heck, maybe next time we could do some kind of a race to see who gets the best PV by the end of a session. I mean, that's, be fun. that's really fun. I've done that once with Bay Leaf, who the Ironmon community will recognize as one of the runners who has like multiple clears across multiple games in Kaizo Ironmon. Incredible luck with his seeds, but incredible execution with his gameplay. Um, him and I in the past have done uh, a, a day of Ironmon racing. That would be a really fun, a really fun event if we get a couple Ironmon gamers together. We all line up. I had the idea of doing a lab event day where we give everybody X amount of time and see how, who can escape the lab the most times in a single day. You Even if you win the lab, you reset anyway and you try again and just see who can get in a, in a blank hour period the most escapes out of the lab. Maybe we'll do that at some point. You want to know what? Because I'm doing my own personal thing on my stream. I'm doing a summer of Iron Man. I call it uh, Fire Red Hot Summer because this is Fire Red. Oh, nice. And um, I'm trying to see how many clears I can get in one summer. So maybe we could do something like midsummer where we have maybe you and Bayleaf coming on and doing that. Absolutely. Oh, uh, that would be fun just to see. You know, we could keep track of a ton of stats, like lava escapes, badges over the course of a night. It'd be cool. So mm -hmm. maybe that's something we want to think about doing in the future. It seems like chat's really into this so far. Everybody's just vibing and having a great time tonight, and I'm glad folks are enjoying it. But I do want to give a really big shout out again. Xwater, your commentary is so stellar. Like if someone ever said, okay, find a um, like a super professional and knowledgeable commentator for this, Xwater, you've been doing such a great job. Thank you. That means a lot. That. Yeah. I appreciate that. Of course, of course. I put a lot of I put a lot of time into my Iron Mon, so even though I don't have the Kaizo clear yet, I know it well enough. And what can I say? I spent we you you and I both we spent a lot of time on the mic. We know our way around. We know how to dance around a microphone. And that was oh, a absolutely. really nice defeat there. By the way, we just went through the rival no problem, and the Flygon giving us a lot of experience. We're learning our next move, Vice Grip. This time, fifty five damage. This is going to be something I replace Detect with as 55 damage with our physical attack stat. Not great, but this is something that should we run into a Pokemon that we don't have an effective special 
against, this could this could come in handy and be a very valuable solution in that in that situation. But this is the most exciting part, Sky. We're we're now lined up. We have defeated every trainer that leads into Brock. Our next stop is the gym. The most exciting part of a Kaizo Ironmon run, in my opinion, is always the gyms, the big boss battles, and Kaizo Ironmon in particular makes it more exciting by adding three additional enemies to every boss battle, and that includes things like Giovanni and his tower, um, and the gym leaders, and the Elite Four. So Brock, as opposed to having the two Pokemon traditionally, he's going to have five. They are all going to be 50% stronger than they are typically in the in the base game as everything else is in Ironmon. So this is going to be a challenge. Brock's strongest Pokemon going to be, I believe, level 21. And we are currently level 19. However, we should be gaining one more level on the trainer leading into Brock. But... We're going to be hoping that Brock sends out something that's weak to water or weak to psychic for its big ace Pokemon. If anything, just a lot of like small Pokemon, because at this point in the game, it's they, they still show up. Oh, there was one other thing I wanted to cover, too. I'm not sure if this was covered, so I apologize if I'm repeating myself or repeating something from earlier. But on the Iron Mon Discord, there are going to be guides for you for hidden items. I had never seen the hidden items. Oh my gosh, Gengar. I'd never seen any hidden items before Gengar. in Pokemon. But um, there are hidden items in this game. That's why the item finder is the thing in the vanilla version. Uh, mm -hmm. Be sure you uh, look up those guides because those items are going to be your lifeline. There's one coming up here in Pewter City before Xwater literally hits the gym here, that being Peter Gym. And uh, Xwater will demonstrate right here. And you may think to yourself, well, how does Ice Water know that they're, they're in the same spots every single Years time? Years of practice, baby. Years <laughs> of practice. <laughs> this is a force sense. of habit right here. Just save before the gym, even though it doesn't matter. But this is this is the moment of truth. And yeah, those those items, as Sky was saying, those hidden items are there's there's probably about 50 hidden items through the game. And every one of them is a chance at a potion. And every potion or paralyzed heal or full heal, any of that is absolutely vital to the success of an Ironmon run. We have now entered the gym, and as, as per Ironmon rules in Ultimate and above, gyms have a no way out rule. Once you enter, you cannot leave. We are stuck. We cannot leave until we defeat Brock. This is our move set. We've got Vice Grip at 55 power, 100 accuracy, physical. We've got Luster Purge, only 5 PP, but it's 70 damage, can lower special defense. We've got Psy Beam. It's going to be our go-to psychic move at 65 due to its higher PP. And we've got Water Pulse. Both of these moves having a chance, I believe 10%, at confusing the foe. Meanwhile, our special attack sitting at a comfortable 44. Absolutely speed demon dog over here with 59 speed and a really, really high health pool. That being said, our special defense is a little low. If we under end up running into any water type moves, we are not going to be feeling great. So let's, let's give it a shot. Let's see how this goes. Really sets the tone for everything with this first battle right here, this first enemy. Uh, why we keep checking stats? It's just a reminder. I mean, sometimes it's kind of hard to memorize that stuff when you're under the pressure of a gym. Uh, if you take a look, though, uh, there's a new tracker that's up right now. We didn't feature it tonight, but in the future, we'll definitely consider featuring it. And that tracker will show us the stats at all times, as well as possible stats for the enemy Pokemon. So that's kind of neat. Really glad that Thunder Punch didn't... Okay, hold on. I'm not going to commentate it. All right, really glad these Thunder Punches did not land a Paralysis as that would leave the rest of this gym a, a, a tremendous challenge. It would be it would be very hard to get through. And we, luckily enough, are up against a, uh, a Water Rock, I believe, type Pokemon, which means four times super effective. Unless this thing is just pure fire, I can't remember exactly. Either way, we didn't defeat it in one shot. It's going to heal itself, but it will not be healing itself immediately. So we've made it through our first enemy in the gym with still 63 health and 500 experience. Not enough to level up just quite. Doom Doe is going to have to defeat Brock starting at level 19. 
And yeah, we. I, I, another reason I like to jump in and check the stats so frequently is when I don't, when we don't have the tracker live on the screen. It is nice for as a reminder for the chat uh, and the audience to see exactly what we're working with, what sort of stats our Pokemon has. It's a nice little piece of information to make sure everyone's aware of. All right, that takedown's gonna okay, a little, uh, about nine damage. The Meryl doing about nine damage. We've got four Pokemon left, 54 HP. We're about to gain a level on the Meryl. And that's a nice boost in HP. Five HP, three speed. Unfortunately, only one on all of the other stats. Would have loved a little bit more special attack there. But now we're up with a Plusle. And Psybeam is the slightly stronger move, both neutral between Water Pulse and Psybeam here. So I'm going to stick with the Psybeam. The Bubble Beam, unfortunately, going to be a devastating amount of damage for us, having low special attack, and it's going to drop our speed. Uh. This puts us in a rough situation where I don't think two Psybeams guarantee victory. I'm going to amp up the amount of damage and hope for a stat drop on the plus. So we can survive one more Bubble Beam as long as it doesn't crit. Hopefully it decides. And we get a critical oh! hit ourselves. Are you kidding? The Doom what? Dog. Go. <laughs> this is why I love Ironmon. Moments like that. Moments like that. All right, we're jumping back to Psybeam now that War Turtle's out. Level 21. This is the enemy's ace. That is a lot of damage. Karate Chop. That is a super effective move. This is a bad situation for us. We currently only have one potion to deal with at the moment. We only have one potion. Healing items are only usable inside gyms. Spite, great move for the enemy War Turtle to use. It's going to reduce our Psybeam PP, but it's not going to hurt us, which is what we really need right now. We're going to try and drop its special defense. This is going to line us up for an easier finish if it works. And another critical hit! Are you kidding me? Ace Water, what are you doing right now? And how do I learn it? Oh my goodness. Hopefully we get enough damage from this next Psybeam to take it down. Just oh, left with a no. shred of HP, but that's okay. We're going to get through this as long as we don't miss. Two enemies left. We really need to run into some Pokemon that are weak to the moves we have remaining. All right, and we got two special attack on that level up. Going to make us a little bit more powerful for these last two. A Mantine. All right, okay. this is a high BST enemy, but... I think we've got a decent enough chance as long as we're not seeing any same type attack bonus water type moves. Another critical hit. Absolutely remarkable. Mantine using Mimic, not going to be able to do any damage to us because we will move first, moving into that last challenge in front of us. The last wall, a Drowsy. We're going to switch to Water Pulse here for that neutral damage. Protect, okay. we've got a stall going on. Sky, I am shaking in my boots right now. I'm using the literal edge of my seat right now. Oh, no. Okay. All okay, right. Good, Shadow good. Punch is not very effective. I almost forgot that that's the relationship between Dark and Ghost there. Really oh, yeah. nice. The Protect fails and Doom Doe with that Water Pulse. Going to take down Brock. This is something that sometimes doesn't even happen across an eight-hour stream getting past that's Brock. True. This is an absolute dynamite feat of strength and accomplishment for the dog. We got to give it some praise in the chat. We got to give it a nice round of applause. Absolutely incredible performance. Chat, let's hear it for Axwater. Again, that is twitch.tv slash Axwater. Congratulations. What a gamer to make it past Brock. <laughs> and the best part, we get that free TM. It's going to have Grass Whistle. The TM is Grass Whistle. I'm not sure if that's going to be learnable. No, it will not be, unfortunately, as every TM is given a half-half chance of being learnable by every Mon. So sometimes you get it from the gym, you can't even use it. But either way, Grass Whistle is a 55 accuracy move that puts the enemy to sleep, which is not the most valuable, um, is not the most valuable ability. If it were very accurate, I'd be a little like, more excited for it. Hey, I cannot believe all those crits on Luster Purge. I, I know, oh it my was God. wild. It was wild. And we got the crit on Psybeam as well. That was, that was, there was something watching over the Doom Dog there. Something was watching over her. 
I am so proud of you, X Potter. That was so epic. <laughs> Thank you. That was the, that was the perfect moment. If there was gonna be something cool happening in this three-hour block we got, I'm really glad it happened there because that was the Brock fight is a hard spot to get past. Now we get to go ahead and take care of this nice mess of trainers, which usually isn't too difficult. We're gonna have a few uh, challenges coming up, but getting through these next few trainers, making our way through Mount Moon can be a little bit risky, but overall we should be seeing a pretty clear path to Cerulean City, where our next big wall will be the Rival Fight rematch. People will be naming their houndoms Doom Doe forever to commemorate For this years moment. to come. <laughs> <laughs> Statues will be built in her honor. See, I'm telling y'all, get detached. That's, that's some risky business right there. <laughs> All right, the Rhyhorn, that's great. Two or four times a week to water. Always nice to get a nice easy defeat on an enemy here. I just, I, I'm still coming down from that x Potter. That was just, oh, so I proud know. Of you. It was a great moment. Wow, I'm looking that, at the, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm just saying, I'm looking at the uh, move list here, and it looks like our next move is coming at level 27 for Doom Doe. So we'll be learning our next move at level 27. What is your PB? Uh, someone in chat was asking. Oh, yeah, the furthest I've made it is uh, Bruno at the Elite Four. The second fight of the Elite Four is as far as we've made it. One, I, I think one run at two uh, made it into um, uh, Giovanni's Gym, Gym 8, but yeah. Only one foray into the Elite Four thus far. This is nerve-wracking. That Entei just got a critical hit and paralyzed us in one go. Really hoping we're able to get through this now. If that Entei is going to be able to deal a lot of damage, we're going to be a little scared. We need, it looks like, still two more Water Pulses to get through this battle. And being paralyzed is not going to make it very easy. And on top of it all, we do not have any healing items this is this is where ironmon is ironmon we are now up to a raw game of chance we can survive one more thunderbolt it looks like that last one did 18 damage we need to hit on this next move in order to succeed comet punch the toss-up okay very interesting from entei not gonna defeat us hopefully Four hits and water falls through the paralysis. The run keeps moving. The Doom Doe is going to continue. Speaking of the run keeps moving, uh, I got a question I'm sure someone in the chat has. If uh, this mod doesn't go down tonight, would you continue this on your stream at some point? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, this mod will continue its legacy on my own stream should it should it make it to the end yes. of our segment. Yeah, should it make to the end of our segment, of course. But I, I'm curious, too. I want to see what happens. That's the thing about Iron Mon chat. You got to know what happens. You just you can't leave it. You know, if there's a cliffhanger onto the next stream, you want to be there. You don't want to miss any of that Mon story. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And it typically like when you get a good Mon running, because there's a lot of there's a lot of farming, grinding you got to do to get through the game. So unless you're someone who's streaming 12 hours a day, you're not going to finish a run in a single session most of the time. Oh no, chat, don't get, don't get attached. It's Iron Man. Anything can happen. I don't want to see anybody's <laughs> feelings get hurt, please. <laughs> oh, goodness. I always say, it is better to have loved and lost than to never have loved at all. I'm pro team get attached. I think get as attached as you want, chat. Because even if this doesn't work out, we'll suffer the heartbreak together. We'll get through those tough times. And eventually, one day, we will learn to love again. Just as we learned to love Doomdo. I cannot stress enough um, 
just how much I'm having fun with the Axe Water. This has been so much fun. Yeah, it's really it's a really good time. I love it. I'm really happy we made it past Brock. That was my big that was like my big goal for for tonight was getting a run past Brock. And that's a lofty goal. That's a lofty goal. So it worked out. I'm I'm very happy it worked out. Yeah, so someone was asking about this in chat, and I'm more than happy to answer. So again, dungeons, uh, things like caves, like Mount Moon, Rock Tunnel, etc. Gyms, you have to fight all the trainers in the gyms, but not necessarily in caves, so there's that. Uh, you cannot live, leave a gym or a cave until you are on the other side of it, so either till the gym leader goes down or until you're on the other side of the cave, and you cannot re-enter, so if you skip trainers in the cave, you cannot go back to it. It is, again, Kaizo's risky business. I cannot say that enough. And then... Uh, trying to think if there's something else I'm missing. There, there's so many rules, and again, if you do want to see the rules, if you're in Twitch chat watching live, there is right there, everything is attached to that link will tell you everything you need to know. If you're watching on YouTube, again, twitch.tv slash iEarPie, he will point you in the correct direction as the creator of this challenge. So, again, if you have any questions or you want to get more hands-on and try it your, for yourself, the Ironbound community is more than happy to help. We're happy to have you all aboard. Absolutely. The rules, there's so many of them. There's so many to remember. When you're first starting out, you're like spending half your time keeping an eye on the rule sheet, but like they end up all flowing into each other, making sense. It's not too hard to make sense of everything that's happening in with them as you're going through. Um, a lot of them are just hyper specific to very like small areas of the game. Uh, got another question for the chat for X Water. Uh, interested to know the worst RNG X Water has ever had during a Kaiser run. Oh, the worst RNG during a Kaizo run. I have had, um, let's see. I'm trying to think of which one of my, oh, you know what it was is I had a Pokemon. I had a, I had a run that started with a Gengar, right? And this Gengar's speed stat was unruly. It was like level five. It had like 35 speed like I've never seen a speed stat this high. It was incredible somehow This Gengar escaped the lab and I pivoted away to a Snorlax a Snorlax that had the ability shell armor Which protects your Pokemon from critical hits, which is in my opinion an S tier ability in uh, In Ironmon now this Snorlax had great moves great stats great ability it it really looked like it was gonna go the whole nine yards until we get to Lavender Town, we finish up the rival fight there, and we start farming trainers on the bridge to the south, and we stumble into, lo and behold, a Gengar, the very same Pokemon that we abandoned that run. And in my head, I'm thinking, I had a Gengar. I know that it is nothing but fast, so I do not need to worry. I'm going to defeat this Gengar, and it is going to be an easy time. Well... The one move that you need to be afraid of when an enemy Pokemon is fast is Destiny Bond, and guess what it used? It used Destiny Bond, so the Gengar made its fate intertwine with mine, and as I defeated it, I went down with it. And that run was thrown away because Gengar is just too quick, too quick. That's probably oh. one of my roughest RNG segments. I wanted to answer something else that I think has been kind of floating around chat. A uh, Wonder Guard is present in this. If you don't know what Wonder Guard is, Ninja has an ability. Only Shed Ninja can have it, though. That's how our settings are with uh, Wonder Guard. And we always are kind of conscious of this as Iron Man runners. Okay, do we have what is called Wonder Guard protection? Can we break through a Wonder Guard? And it does happen every once in a while where you have to wear down all of your power points and end up in a struggle battle with Shed Ninja. And no one wants that, but that is something that does happen. Uh, I still say the most fearsome thing to happen in terms of RNG is Parish Song. We witnessed that a little bit earlier, which brings up my worst RNG moment. And would you believe it, X-Water, my worst RNG moment was at my champion run. Like the one that I actually completed. Uh, wow. I got into a fight, I forget what the Mon was, but in the same turn, I got Parish Song, and then I hit a Mon, and I got paralyzed via Static which is the contact Ooh. ability. Yeah. So I had just enough moves left where if I didn't get fully paralyzed, I would make it, but I couldn't get fully paralyzed once. 25% chance and I made it through. 
So even though I did make it through, it was still pretty bad RNG that those two things happened on the same turn. Yeah, that's that is that is very scary. That's why I'm always so excited to learn non-contact moves, just like you mentioned uh, earlier. It's so good to not have to worry about things like poison point and static and effect spore to just be essentially just the don't touch me rule set. Just, just stay away from me. Don't touch me. Stay away. That's 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 how I feel about getting those those kinds of moves. It's really nice. Now, I saw someone in chat asked um, how to get around Destiny Bond, and the big thing with getting around Destiny Bond is having high speed. If you have good speed, you have a better chance at kind of getting past and around the Destiny Bond. Now, in the scenario that you do see a Destiny Bond, you know that it's there, Step one, note it. Note the Pokemon that used it, what level it was, when it used it, all that kind of stuff. Step two, do not attack that Pokemon again until it is. it uses a different move and you're certain you're going to move first the following turn or until it has used all five of its Destiny Bonds. A Pokemon will only be able to use it five times. Even enemy Pokemon have their power points in um in pokemon as at least in this gen i'm not sure how it works across the board but i think it's in every gen the enemy pokemon still have to use their own pp so destiny bond you can get around it by stalling out the battle and if you only have attacking moves you can throw pokeballs at the enemy pokemon you won't catch them the trainer will swat them away but it is an easy way to essentially waste the turn and give your and buy time to watch that destiny bond get used over and over again and effectively run out. Yeah, someone had said, uh, how are we going to defeat this in 45 minutes? The answer is we don't. Uh, this is a showcase. We're just showing off the essence of Iron Man, which I feel like this has been a terrific showcase so far. Oh, yeah. We've seen all kinds of stuff. If anything, the only inaccurate part of the showcase is there's usually more lab, but I'm glad that there <laughs> yeah. isn't in this case. You know, x Potter, being an absolute legend of the lab today, uh, got out of there without much difficulty. And... Yeah, so again, we don't finish this. This is a 10 hour run. Uh, the best way to show this off in a GDQ-esque setting or a hotfix setting is to just see how far can we get in X amount of time. And there's nothing wrong with that because there's still a lot of funny things that can happen. The most dangerous part of the run is frankly the first two hours. And that's where the bulk of the action is. Yeah, we once we jump into Mount Moon, it becomes a battle of attrition of resources of how many trainers do we want to fight before we leave? And like once we, you know, get hit by a few moves, end up getting to that half health kind of range, we're going to end up having to make the decision like, oh, do I fight more trainers, go for more experience so that we have an easier time in the upcoming battles? Or do I leave the mountain and effectively keep my keep myself er, er, alive, but then risk going in at a lower level for the for the, the rival fight. There's a lot of trade-off and risks you have to take and not knowing what the enemies have in their, as their, as their Pokemon makes it very, very scary to take those risks. So having a nice move set really helps kind of like balance that. Right now we've got Psychic and Water as our primary offensive moves, which gives us coverage against Rock, against Ground, against Fire, um, against Poison, against I believe fighting and that's a pretty good amount of coverage but we could afford more because now we still we still do have a few Pokemon that are gonna be problems water types we're not necessarily great against yet especially the water types that share a psychic typing we don't have a way to handle those very well got to pick up those hidden items traditionally in fire red when you see a little patch of grass that has I don't know, kind of like a little piece of little piece of fuzz on it up here. This this one right here. Those are gonna be a hidden item every time. That's where they put berries in the vanilla version of the game. So for this run, whenever you see one of those, it's the easiest of the hidden items to remember. You always gotta make sure you pick those up. So uh, there's a couple questions here. Do you skip self? No, we do self. However, however, there's there's a lot of risky things going on with these caves. So there are mandatory battles, 
But believe it or not, a lot of these dungeons and caves where, where you can skip trainers, unlike gyms, you don't have to fight every single trainer in the dungeons and caves. So for example, in Mount Moon here, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Xwater, we usually go to the last two trainers first. This is in case we get poisoned and we need to leave the cave as soon as possible. So you do the first two trainers and then you can backtrack if you're feeling bold or you're feeling like your items are in an okay enough situation to take that risk. In Sylph, there's only a handful of trainers you need to fight and then of course Giovanni. And then once Giovanni vanishes, you can go clean up all the items. So again, it's just one of those, you, it's all about comfort level, how many items you currently have and your route. And how do you assess this? Trial and error. You play through this and you see what you are personally comfortable with doing and not doing. And from there, you just kind of develop your own route and way of doing Iron Man. Yeah, everyone has their ways that they approach it. Um, I'm, I'm the same way as Sky on that. I like to go through Mount Moon and the various boss regions. I like to fight the final enemy first and then work my way backwards and take on enemies that I think are more that are, that are easier and and that I can handle with my remaining you know moves and and and, and power points and stats and all that um, and even like knowing what the what the trainers have in terms of quantity and level of Pokemon can be very valuable where if there's three trainers left and I think I could handle one but I don't think I could handle three then you could tr walk up and deal with the Pokemon that or the trainer that has one Pokemon and then leave for that extra little bit of experience. Now, before we jump into the cave, I'm going to give a stat breakdown, another run into what exactly we have, what we're working with. We are level 26 with 111 HP, very high. That is a very high HP for this level. 80 speed, again, very high for this level. Attack stat 29, that's low, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because our special attack is 58, which is modest, but pretty good. Then our defense is both being a little low. Hopefully our high HP will make up for that. This Pokemon definitely is, um, it's a dreamer. It's got some good tools, but it's definitely gonna need the perfect moves if this run is going to essentially work out. And because we cannot farm any wild Pokemon for experience, and we definitely don't wanna catch and switch to another Pokemon, I will start using my repels. The only one of two items you're allowed to purchase from the shops in Iron Mon. All items used in Iron Mon you must find in the wild, randomly placed around. So inside of the actual game, you can only buy Pokeballs and you can only buy repels. And I gotta pick up these hidden items in the cave as we explore it. And as you can see, I am narrowly avoiding contact with, with every trainer that's lying around here oh rare candy now that's a nice piece of candy <laughs> i couldn't help but that's like ooh, piece of candy <laughs> right oh piece of candy oh found a little piece of candy on the ground <laughs> oh my gosh the spinner i actually the spinner i, I know spinner. oh my god oh that's good <laughs> that is a really good item yeah I do not like that spinner. That spinner no. has caught me more than probably any other spinner <laughs> in the game. Yeah, because you got you got to go through past like three sides of them. It's too much. Yeah, that rare candy is a really nice find, though. I'm very happy about that. This zinc is good too. That's gonna up our special defense, which is definitely a stat we want to have a little bit more of. And looking at it, um, iron also not a bad idea. I'm gonna continue to save my PP up for later, as well as my rare candy. Um, Sometimes I'll use the rare candies earlier in the run, but typically I like to save them for the very, very final, final bit of the, of the run. Um, so there is a question here. Where is the cutoff for switching before the first gym? Uh, typically most of us will not pivot after Viridian. There is an opportunity to pivot in Diglett Cave, but I've even never done it in almost uh, 2000 seeds and it's exceedingly risky, like exceedingly risky to pivot to the Diglett in Diglett Cave. Yeah, it's 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 wild because in the vanilla game, there's the level I, I forget what it is, level thirty something. I think Doug Trio. So in Iron Mon, it's even stronger than that by fifty percent, right? And that Pokemon is going to be randomized and it's going to have a lot, a lot of levels. And as long as you are equal to or higher level than it, you can catch it in Kaizo Iron Mon. But like Sky was saying, it's so risky. 
you're essentially completely chancing it on a Pokemon that you don't know the stats of in, in any way, shape, or form. Um, in Ultimate Ironmon, you're actually allowed to have a team of up to six, and you're allowed to switch out Pokemon and use them. So that Doug Trio is a vital piece of winning in Ultimate Ironmon, as if you run into a scenario where your main Mon gets poisoned or it listens to Parish Song, you need something to switch your Pokemon out to. So that pivot in the Doug Trio cave can come in handy and can potentially end up being a Pokemon that you use because you're not throwing it away by by using it, right? Whereas in Kaizo, there is a rule where if you catch a pivot, you must use it. No questions asked. You have to use the pivot if you catch it. You can't catch it, see that it's bad, and decide to stick with what you're using. You have to take it. And because of that risk, Kaizo runners typically don't catch the Doug Trio. I think this is such a cute name for this Doom Dope. <laughs> I really, you know what? Yeah, it was a little typo, but it worked out so nice. It's adorable. It's cute. This is my favorite day of the week, everybody. It's new move day. We're learning a new move, Aerial Ace. Ooh, Not necessarily that's... exactly what we want, but as it's Sky Shad brought up, it's Shedinja coverage. We now do not need to worry about the Shedinja and its Wonder Guard. That's right. Wow, that's really awesome. Hey, look, it's Shedinja's, it's Shedinja's son. <laughs> that was very nice. That was a very nice aerial ace. Good job, Doomdo. And our last hidden item in the cave, a heart scale. Okay, so we haven't found very many... Uh, useful items. I will point out that I am using the quality of light, uh, the quality of life mod for Ironmon, specifically for Kaizo Ironmon. So you'll see that that heart scale is not in my inventory. It automatically gets sold as it is a useless item in this run. So for the sake of easy inventory management or quality of life, um, this mod will remove any illegal items you pick up from your inventory right as you pick them up, which is such a nice little little experience for it. It makes it so nice. I, I really I really love using this mod for these runs. There's definitely a little bit of debate in the community about the validity of using the mod among not using the or versus not using the mod for the the the, the sacredness of the Kaizo Ironmon clear. But I think they, that we've generally reached a point of most people are fine with it. There are a few small scenarios where the quality of life mod can potentially make a scenario exist where you gain a slight competitive advantage compared to someone who's not using it. But that goes both ways because sometimes there are situations where the quality of life mod it brings in a scenario that you would not have gained an advantage from where you would have gained a disadvantage so there is a couple of slight differences what is your regular attack at again i know it's not quite what your special attack is but if you find that amon is super um special uh defense like if it's very resistant to special moves uh it really is, might still be a good move for that to kind of get yeah. around that stat my physical is uh, it's about 30 it's a little bit higher than my level is so it's while it's not great, uh, definitely if we run into a Pokemon that is super special defensive, it's definitely going to be worth um, trying out the Aerial Ace and seeing if it compares in terms of in terms of damage. Imagine a flamethrower or a fire punch on this oh, mon next water. I, oh, I would be over the moon. Flamethrower on this mon would be incredible, incredible. Now I'm not leaving the cave just yet. I'm just grabbing this last item. And we're going to backpedal and start clearing out those trainers that we skipped to get as much experience as we can before we go and refight our rival. Altaria, got to bring back some good memories, Sky. Yep, that's uh, Dragon, as I called it. Uh, I think I called it that as like a Super Metroid reference or something, but <laughs> I ended up getting really attached to uh, Altaria. Uh, that is my third place Mon. Also died on Bruno, by the way, so uh, high five there, X-Water. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> 
that's uh, kind of ridiculous to me that that's my third place mod. Uh, my second place mod is Aerodactyl, who died on the champion, and of course, first place is um, Melodic, who did it all. Uh, did it all, baby. All odds. <laughs> Melodic is a is a great Iron Mon. Well, here's the thing: like I had Drizzle Thunder right from the beginning, like that was mm -hmm. the beginning combo, and people are like, "Oh, that must have been easy." I'm like, "Do you know how scared I was? I was a water Pokemon who could have been thundered against." That's true. Yeah, you set yourself up for it as well as setting yes. it up for you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> This is an interesting situation I'm laid with right now because I'm paralyzed and this is the first of many trainers left. I've only got one way of dealing with this paralysis, but I don't want to sacrifice this experience. I hate to waste a full heal, but you gotta you gotta be you gotta be able to get past the the item paralysis that a lot of players in RPGs feel. You know, when you're playing through and you're like, oh, I got to save that potion for later. It's important in Iron Mon to be able to get past that and to really think about it. These levels right now are valuable enough that I feel okay enough to use that full heal in favor of gaining more experience through the rest of these trainers. But part of me deeply, deeply regrets losing it. All right, we've got Rock Bug Shuckle. Good situation to use a water type move. Beautiful. Critical, super effective. Love to see the damage. Next up, we've got an Oddish Poison type. That means our Psy Beam is gonna be very powerful here. We're getting some lucky pulls right now on the enemies that we're up against in this trainer fight. And eradicate. All right, good old classic rat jam. Let's see if we can take it down in one side beam. Probably gonna take two. Oh, and I'm proven wrong. The Doom Doe able to handle itself. Uh, question: Do we know what the world record for Kaizo finish time? Of? No, but there's, we really don't do like we use a timer lightly, but that's only supposed to be there for fun. I think in Iron Man we go by more like PBs, clears things like that of more than the timer. The timer's more or less just there as an extra statistic. Yeah. I think uh, the most exciting stats are to see what players cleared with uh, and what level they were when they cleared. For example, like if someone were to clear with a Pokemon like, let's say that Zangoose we had earlier that has a, a stat total, a base stat total of 500 and, or 458, that would, I think, be one like almost PB worthy in the sense that you're you're finishing the game with a Pokemon that's a little underpowered. So that adds an extra layer of achievement and accomplishment to it um, as as you go through there. Or completing, let's say, both Emerald and Fire Red. Right, you get more clears under your belt because getting just one. I've been cracking at the Kaizo Ironmon. The Kaizo Ironmon for for months now, and I've still only been to the Elite Four one time. It's uh, it is a arduous task to make that to cover that distance. Um, how many attempts did you have there? You said a thousand, right? You stopped at a thousand and took a I'm break. I'm about which is, yeah, and I'm yeah. back in now, so I'm at about eleven eleven hundred ish, uh, mm -hmm. give or take a few. Yeah, uh, one other question. What was the Mon you had during your PB run? The one that got to burn out? Mine was an Exploud. Mine okay. was an Exploud that was, as I call it, a glass hammer. Um, because it had an incredibly high physical attack and it had an incredibly high speed. But it had no defenses, it had low health. So it was fast and it hit hard and that's it. And it had like really good moves, all sorts of all sorts of potential behind it, but we ended up running into a Pokemon that we just couldn't deal with, and it had the it had the necessary pieces to take us down. And it was one of those situations where I had notes, and I was like, "All right, we're fine as long as we don't run into X." And we ran into X. It was an Executor. It was the it was one of the few Pokemon's who. Between Grass and Psychic, we just didn't have a solution to with our move coverage, right? Because my big, my big defeat, like my big powerful move was Earthquake that run, 
and Executor does not take a lot of damage from Earthquake. Especially that one, it had a lot of defense stats. Oh, you got to Elite Four twice! Uh, oh no, wait, just the no, one. No, just That's once, one. yeah. Okay, I did make sorry. it to the very last Pokémon of the 8th Gym one time, though. That's my second best. I mean, honestly, that might as well be like the Elite Four. Giovanni's right on Gym the cusp, is a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Giovanni's Gym has, I think, 30 Pokémon among, among the various Gym Trainers. There's about 30 Pokémon you have to defeat before you get a chance to fight Giovanni, which even having that much power points available between your Pokémon is, is rare and unlikely. So it's a really hard part of the run to get through. Especially in Kaizo when you're not allowed to use items outside of battle, so you can't use your ethers or your um, your elixirs unless you're willing to soak up a hit from one of those enemies. Ooh, the confusion on water pulse. Really nice. Let's hope it keeps us safe. Let's hope the spinda doesn't do anything dangerous. Beautiful. Great. We're having. See, right now is one of those situations where I'm like tiptoeing on the idea of leaving the moon, being at 54 health, but there are only a few trainers left, and mm. Mm. we're we're really doing well so far on experience. We're really close to level 30. If we hit level 30, I think that's the point at which I would like to leave. Because it's unlikely we hit 31, and that extra one level could make a difference for the rival fight that is coming up. I actually typically leave around 28, but again, I I take more chances in this than I should, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think the trainer to the left has only two Pokemon, maybe three. Oh, one important rule that I'm not sure if we talked about, so... You can only use healing items, that is power point healing and health healing, inside battle. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to use it and you're not up against a trainer, you can do a wild encounter for it, but you cannot use it outside of battle. And that's one of the toughest rules of Kaizo. There is yeah. no way to safely heal. So if X Water gets poisoned and then let's say a max repel was up that's 250 steps and if there's no more trainers that's really risky it's really really risky yeah that's why um earlier in this in this in the cave that's why i opted to use my um ooh, endeavor interesting that's why i opted to use my full heal in battle because it's the only place i'm allowed to use my full heal water gun that's probably not going to defeat us but this is officially, like, I am, I am ready to leave. I am done fighting trainers. I got my level 30. I pushed my luck. We're at level 27. This is, or sorry, we're at level 30. We're at 27 health. This is a perfect time to get up on out of here, as they say. And that leads us to the rival fight coming next, which is... It's a doozy. This is going to be a doozy. The rival fight is probably the biggest wall we're going to face. I don't know, until even probably until the I would say the rival fight's a bit more of a wall than like Misty is because there's a lot of trainers you can you can you can farm on before fighting Surge or Misty. You get a lot of experience, but this rival fight can be pretty, pretty brutal. X Water, I just want to say, by the way, unrelated, I absolutely love the emotes that I've been seeing in chat from your community. They are so adorable. I I appreciate that. They've got, there's a lot of special, special emotes out there. I've really enjoyed the new animated ones, too. The Moist Bravo being a fan favorite of mine. It's a fun little meme, actually, because my, my, my mom is absolute, absolutely hilarious in that, like, she will like give me praise and say congratulations, say bravo for like the slightest, smallest, inconsequential thing. Like I take out the trash, bravo, Mickey. You did it, Mickey. Good job, Mickey. Bravo. <laughs> and so she'll come on the stream sometimes, um, and it's always a joke. And so when we 
created the round of applause emote. We needed to come up with a name, and someone pitched Bravo for it, and I was like, oh my god, that's perfect. So there he is, little Bonky, the little dog. He's cheering you on. He's having a good time. He's proud of you. He's just proud of you, and he's happy to show it. So, um, hang on, there was a question before that. I just, I, I felt the need to say that because, again, it's just adorable. The community is adorable and the emotes are adorable, and I love it. Yeah, let's see if we can give a round of applause for the Doom Doe, because we are about to go fight the rival. Mm -hmm. uh, one last question here. When are you planning to use that candy? So typically, and again, could differ from Iron Man player to Iron Man player, uh, we like to use rare candies towards the end because there's much more of an experience gap. Uh, the higher up you get levels. So I typically like to use mine right around the 8th gym or the Elite Four if the run is fortunate enough to make it that far. Yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty much the same way. The only situation I'll really switch that up is um, if I'm in a position where I'm one level away from a new move and I desperately need it before the next battle, that's a situation in which I would use a rare candy. But the amount of experience that you need in the final final bit of this game for a level up is just so high we use what's called every pokemon in iron mon has the fluctuating experience curve applied to it which um every even evil every even level is a little bit less experienced than the following odd level but in the late game it's absurd so in the late game you typically want to save your rare candies for the odd levels and then you fight a little bit you gain one on the even and then it's an extra 20,000 30,000 experience the next odd level so you use the rare candy and then the next even goes down again by that 20 30,000 so that's typically how i like to use my rare candies when i'm uh when i'm in that late game iron mon all right this this scares me this flygon has been it's been pretty tame this run, but now that it's level 27, I definitely feel a little... Okay, Sacred Fire is a strong move, but we are a fire type, so I'm not overly worried about this. And I see someone in chat. Where can you continue watching this after time is up? If you are, if you like the uh, Iron Mon action, there are so many amazing Iron Mon streamers out there. I would recommend checking the... Pokemon directory in Twitch. Of course, you can follow me. I'll be live the rest of the week getting some Iron Mon content going on as well. Skybills herself does plenty of Iron Mon content as well, so give her a follow if you're not already. And um, even if you search it up on YouTube, you can find some great Iron Mon runs over there. Oh, that way you can see you. the success, the successful Iron Mon runs, because it's a oh. long, it takes a long time to to find a winning one live, because they are few and far between. They are, and and I was talking about the Iron Mon community earlier. I swear, you get up to like the the seventh or eighth gym, and everybody, everyone's everybody there. Everybody shows up. Like it's so hype. It's such yeah. a moment. It's so exciting. But uh, I'll definitely be there, Icewater. I definitely want to check out and see what happens to this dog. I'm confident. I, I don't want to jinx the run, but I'm very confident you guys. I know. This. We're getting hit by thunders, though. We lost a lot of health on that last one. This Hypno is scaring me. Ooh, oh, no. No. This, hang in there. This Please. Sandstorm, I hope, it, I hope it defeats the Hypno. I hope it defeats the Hypno. All right. If this, as long as this Water Pulse hits, we're okay. As long as this is the last, this is the last Pokemon. This should be fine. And that's the thing, chat. Like, when you're watching Iron Man, you could leave for five minutes, which is fine. It's okay to take a break. But, like, you could leave for five minutes and you could be seeing the lab again. That's how tense these Iron Man runs are. This is, like, textbook definition of what x is doing here, of what to expect during Iron Man. And this is, this is such a great demo, x -Water. I really appreciate it. It's working out so well because the Demon Doe just keeps surviving with these close calls, like one after another, running into situations where we're getting into red HP, but still managing to make it through the battle just by that last little bit of energy. That extra level in Mount Moon might have been what got us there too. 11 HP left. That one level in Mount Moon, I think... I think really did make the difference when we look back on it. Ah, 
Sandstorm is quite the problem in Iron Mon runs as well. Sandstorm, hail, any of those weather conditions that deal damage over time, because typically, um, ooh, that Diglett has water absorbed. That is a that is troublesome. Typically in Iron Mon, you can't really heal, right? You're not. It's illegal to learn healing moves like Roost and uh, Slack Off and Recovery, so you can't heal that way. You can't use potions out of battle. Not that you'd really even want to in many scenarios because the potion supply is so limited being uh, banned from buying items. And then if you're stuck in, let's say, a cave like Mount Moon and you get into a five Pokemon battle where there is a sandstorm present, that's a bunch of damage that you're going to be taking that you have no effective way of healing, even if you're able to one-shot every enemy Pokemon that comes out. And the sandstorm's going to come out. It's a really hard, it is a really hard thing to deal with is a lot of sandstorms and hails. And it's something that's worth keeping track of as you uh, take notes in your Ironmon runs and proceed through the late game. So again, folks, please be sure to give Xwater a follow at twitch.tv slash Xwater. And again, assuming Assuming that this wonderful doggo, she makes it to the end of this segment here, Doomdo, our lovable, lovable pupper, uh, please be sure to keep an eye. Now, again, I don't know, x when are you going to continue this? I don't want to, like, volunteer that, oh, like, this probably to tomorrow. Be. Yeah, okay, cool, I'm, cool. I'm planning on being live tomorrow, noon, noon start time, Eastern time every day, and I'll usually start off with some other content and transition into Iron Mon as the day goes on, so... Somewhere, somewhere in the in the first couple hours of the afternoon. I really enjoy the fact that we can heal on the Nugget Bridge. This would be a very difficult gauntlet to get through if healing were not allowed between these battles, because they all have so many Pokemon, and some of them can be pretty problematic. Luckily, Staryu, not like Starmie, not part Psychic yet, so my Psybeam is still going to do full damage. But with color change, it becomes part Psychic, meaning it lost its water typing, and I can finish it off with Water Pulse. Yeah, there's questions about pivoting again. Um... So what happens is we typically don't pivot after Viridian Force. It is possible to do so in Diglett Cave, but it is not recommended. That is the short answer to it. Yeah. Kaizo Ironmon, you're you're, you're going to be you're going to probably never watch a Kaizo Ironmon stream where you see a pivot past Viridian Forest. I have never seen it personally. Um cuz if you make it that far, you're probably too attached to pivot anyway. Doomdo doing good work on this bridge, getting those levels. Our next move for Doomdo coming sometime in the near future at level 35, which is nice to see. Our move set's pretty pretty concrete right now. We definitely would not mind a strong dark type move, but it is pretty concrete right now. I'll use Psybeam here. I want to go back to the moment where x Water was... Because, you know, x Water is a friend of mine. I want to make sure I remind x Water. Oh, I don't know if this dog's going to go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember the moments where I almost decided to not use the dog, too? I almost switched out. What a mistake that would have been. What a mistake. I have to remind you because... You know, just for posterior sake, you know, somebody in your chat would have reminded you by oh, now. Oh, for so sure. I'm going to be that person because that's <laughs> what I would have typed in the chat if you were on your stream right now, so. Yeah, the Doom Doe. Well, what was I thinking, Doom Doe? What was I thinking? I mean, you got to admit, she just has this will to keep going, this Doom Doe. I love her. Mm-hmm. The speed is really nice, too. It is... It is almost what I would call a little too high, um, which is a, a weird thing to kind of think about with stats, right? Where having one be too high feels almost weird, but speed's an interesting one where exceeding an enemy's speed by more than one 
doesn't change a single thing, right? Like if you're if your speed is, or if the enemy's speed is 50, your speed being 51 or your speed being 501 makes no difference in that matchup. You will still just go first. There's no other real calculations I can think of that are based on speed. So when your speed stat ends up being really, really, really high, yes, you make sure you're always going first, but like if you could have maybe randomized 20 of those stat points onto your attacking stat, you'd still be going first, but you'd have more damage. So there's definitely something to be said about high HP and high speed stats in Kaizo Ironmon. HP, of course, being a little more valuable being high, but me personally, I prefer to have higher defenses and lower health than, than to have it the other way around where your health is high and your defenses are lower. Because at level 32, we're at, we have 135 health right now. And that means that super potions, regular potions, fresh water, lemonade, aren't nearly as impactful as they could be in a scenario where we had 50, like, like, like double the defense, half the health. Sure, we would be a little bit closer to to dying to things like Dragon Rage, right? You know, those those and Seismic Toss, those flat value power moves, maybe a little more vulnerable to critical hits and super effective moves, but it does make your healing items much, much, much more effective for a longer duration of time. So, again, it's one of those caveats of Iron Mon that you really start to learn about as you're doing more and more runs, the differences between your stat spread and, and kind of seeing, looking into the future as you see it build. Definitely. Uh, really quickly, I think we're going to be, unless something happens to the dog, I don't want anything happen to the dog. We're probably going to go up to Bill's house here. I feel like that would be a good stopping point. And sure. that way that would be a nice point for x Water to pick up during the next stream, during x Water's next stream. Yeah, that works for me. That's perfect. Get past the Nugget Bridge, go visit my friend Bill recover him from his little weird experiment where he turned himself into a Pokemon. And I think by then, it, Doom Doe is probably going to learn one more move, so we're going to get to see that last little bit of RNG coming into the run, fitting for the segment we're on right now. Uh, that being said, out of curiosity, x do you use the tracker on your stream? I have just started using it, yeah. Awesome. Slacking. What a Pokemon to be up against. This is a scary lad. Slacking has a stat total that is stronger than most of the legendaries. That is, or at least matches up with most of the legendaries. Stronger than any of the pseudo legendaries, Dragonite, uh, Tyranitar, Salamence, Metagross. Slaking is nerfed in the vanilla game by having the slacking, um, or the, what's, what's the ability called? Truant, the truant ability, where oh no. it will only move every other turn, right? But in Kaizo Ironmon and in randomized runs in general, a slacking will no longer be forced to have that ability and will instead be able to attack every single turn, making it an absolute dynamite powerhouse of a Pokemon to be up against and to have on your side if you manage to get it. But, of course, in Kaizo Ironmon, just like any good asset you could possibly have, it is banned in terms of using it on your own team. Sorry, every time I hear the word Truant, I just... The amount of Pokemon, x that I have caught that have had Truant, and I've just like, well, reset. Ah, it's the like, worst. Oh. Especially oh. when you see it use like a good move and then you catch it, you're like, ooh, I'm so excited. And then it's just like, oh, I'm sleepy. The only time I ever want to see Truant is on my rival's Pokemon at the beginning. Yeah. Think about that being like the 95, and it's like, oh, please. It's the one constant in terms of enemies, your rival's starter. It's the one constant in this entire run. So it's so nice to see the enemy have Truant. One thing that's uh, that I don't think we've mentioned yet that's actually an interesting point to bring up for Iron Mon runs as well is there's a setting um, enabled in this randomizer where we will be seeing after, after enemies Pokemon hit level 30 and above, 
they will never be anything under their final evolution. So we'll no longer beyond um, level 30 see things like Pidgeys or Ratatatas or even like War Turtles or Charmanders or Butter or uh, Caterpies. Everything will always be in its final evolved state at level 30 plus. So once you start getting to that point of the run, that's where the, the note taking really becomes important. Because you'll never see that Pidgey again, but the Pidgeot will be more frequently showing up because of that, all that kind of stuff. I am going to be cheering so much for your clear soon next water. You doom, deserve don't, it. Doom, don't, doom, don't, doom, don't. She's going to be the one. You think so? No, I don't know. <laughs> gotta, <laughs> we got to see what moves we learn. Realistically, Water Pulse and Psybeam are definitely not late game Elite Four winning moves. They're really, really good for getting us through. Okay. But unless our special attack were like double what it is now, I don't think they have enough. Hang on, hang on, hang on a second. I, I, I'm going to ask you, do you think I had optimal for my clear, for my Melodic clear, do you think I had optimal moves for what I cleared? I mean, you had Thunder. You did have Thunder. Th that's one move. I had Needle Arm. I had the ever so powerful Icy Wind. And of course, who can forget about Teeter Dance? Oh, wow. That is a wild spread. Needle yeah. Arm is, I think, what, 70 power ish? Something like that, yeah. 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 70 is a good. I feel like 70 is a good spot. No, usually, usually I don't feel confident unless I have one or two of the like. 80 power plus moves and if they're stab even better same type attack bonus even better but i usually don't feel very comfortable in my runs unless i get something like that i will say i am very happy about having a move set that is filled with full 100 percent accuracy moves because I will tell you, by the end of my run, I felt like McSkyver because they're like, here's a paper clip, here's a rubber band, and here's a pencil. Try to beat the Elite Four. That's what <laughs> I felt like on that move set. <laughs> yeah, that's the McSky <laughs> That's really funny. McSkyver. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> but seriously, I'm just saying, you can win with a suboptimal move set. It is possible. It's you true. Just gotta, you got to be a little creative and a little lucky. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I think the really high speed and high HP mixed with mixed with the low special defense and like modest, I wouldn't say it's bad, but it's a modest special attack. The the overall power of Doom Doe just looks a little bit lacking to make it through a gauntlet of five of Kanto's toughest trainers. But I will never give up. I will never give up. I would never retire Doom Doe before she met her... Before she either met the glorious victory at the end or an untimely fate against any sort of enemy somewhere around here. I think she's got enough potential to make it a good distance, though. I will say. I will ask, as we're on this final uh, stretch of trainers here, I do love uh, audience interaction here. Does anybody else have any questions for myself or X Water about Iron Man? We'll try to answer it to the best of our ability. Somebody said something about a Lapras that had Troon earlier, by the way. <laughs> oh, the that's Lapras. a fun story. Yeah, okay, I, okay. I pivoted to a Lapras once that had Truant. And of course, you see Truant, you're just like, well, this is a reset. But... I also had the ability skill swap, which allows you to swap your ability with the enemy's ability. So my Lapras was able to give its truancy to the enemy Pokemon and then finish out the battle without having to ever skip a turn. And in addition to that, making the enemy Pokemon skip their turns. It was an amazing combo until we ran into Brock and we were up against a Persian who also had truant. So I did the skill swap and I was still not moving and I'm like, what's going on? Why is this happening? And it was a battle of the ages where me and this Persian up against each other were just skipping every other turn. All right, so I do have a slew of questions here. I'm gonna try to knock these out as soon as I can because you know what? Chances are if they're in this chat, YouTube might have them as well. For those of you all who are watching on YouTube, again, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate y'all. 
Um, so what is uh, favorite ability in general? That one's a tough one. I like, uh, I believe it's called shell armor. It blocks yeah. critical hits or soundproof, which can earn the uh, perish song threat. How about you, X-Water? I'm a really big fan of the shell armor as well. Um, I also really appreciate the immunity move. Keeps you safe from poison. Poison's one of the most deadly status effects. Um, all the status effect protecting moves are really good, but it's also really nice to run into one of the various like water absorb or flash fire, any of the abilities that keep you safe from a particular move type when you're weak to that. For example, if you have a Jolteon and you get Levitate, you have just got an ability that completely removes the one weakness you have. So that sort of an ability combo is the stuff of legends. It's like you dream about getting a build like that. Okay, the next one we have, and again, like I said, trying to get through as many of these as possible. Absolutely. What's up with the trainer names? Uh, so what you can do is with this mod, you can go in and manually change the names. It's really cool. Sometimes you, if you want to do like a channel point reward or something like that, uh, it's a fun thing to do to incorporate trainer stuff. So yeah, it's just a way for us to make our streams interactive with Iron Mon. Uh, yeah. What happens with the HM requirements, HM Pokemon? So we, in Kaizo, we have what's called an HM friend, and uh, it is a 100% possibility of learning all the HM moves. So you just teach um, Strength, Fly, Surf, and Cut, and now you think to yourself, well, Sky, aren't there five HMs? Do you need two of them? We don't use Flash. I use an MS Paint map to get through a rock tunnel. You can do it, I promise. It's not too bad. Um, we real quick update. Yeah. We've just hit new move day and Whirlpool has made itself available to us, which is unfortunately not as good as Water Pulse and just a wasted spot in my opinion. So it's going to stay unlearned. Doomdo not going to be learning another move until 43. There are three moves left in the move pool for Doomdo up to up to level 59. But this is, uh, we're, we're, we're definitely running a little bit low on gas for Doomdo in terms of learnable moves. Our move set is good, but I think it needs at least one more bit of variety to have, to have the potential here. A uh, question for you, X-Water. What is your favorite Pokemon that you've ever rolled? I assume this means in the lab without a pivot. Um, definitely the, the... Uh, yeah, actually, it's pre. This goes to my pre Kaizo Iron Mon attempts, but it would definitely be my Gengar that won my Soul Silver Ultimate Iron Mon. Uh, it came straight out of the lab, didn't need to pivot. It had pure power, which is an illegal ability in Kaizo Iron Mon, but pure power, what it does is it just effectively doubles your attack stat. And it is absolutely busted powerful. That is the Pokemon that won my first. Ultimate Iron Mon in Soul Silver Heart Gold, which is spicy because you got to beat the entire game of Heart Gold Soul Silver, and then you've got to beat the post game of Kanto. So you've got 16 gyms to clear, the Elite Four to clear, and you've got to fight Red at the end of it all, who affect who just has a team of six level 100s. It's ridiculous. This run is going to be one that you're going to remember. I mean, just going to GDQ, getting past Nugget Bridge, having so many close calls against Brock and uh, the rival on Nugget Bridge. This has just been so good. Doomdo is definitely entering the Hall of Fame. This is a spectacular run. This is definitely a spectacular run. Are there any mons, uh, this is coming from me personally, are there any mons that you really want to clear this with, like any that you just absolutely have a favorite? Now, with that being said, chat, uh, there are favorites that you can do. You can declare three favorites and you can change them if you want to. You just can't change them on the spot. And if you happen to find one of your favorites in the lab, you can get it. Just remember, no legendaries, no 600 BST mons and up, etc. cetera. Um, what, what would you hope to beat this with, x -Water? Uh, I've had so many Snorlaxes that have gone so far and fallen in in just very unfortunate ways. I would love for a Snorlax to be the one. My little snoozers. Yeah, we have a name for that in our chat. Uh, my, my mod Xpog absolutely loves Snorlax. So we either call it Xpog or Sleepy Kitty. 
Those two are interchangeable. It's just Snorlax is adorable. I Snorlax is Snorlax. great, yeah. And Snorlax learns a lot of moves, has a high stat total. Snorlax is just like through and through a really, really good Ironmon Pokemon. Um, there's a high chance of winning with Snorlax just because of all of those all of those aspects together. You roll a good ability, you get a good stat spread, and if you're able to learn a decent enough like normal type move and take advantage of that same type attack bonus, Snorlax has massive potential. On top of the fact that normal typing is really good in Iron Mon being only weak to fighting. Have you ever had a moment now, again, we're, again, within PG, you know, family-friendly stuff. Sure. Where, like, just something ridiculous happens and you, like, get up out of your chair. You're like, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. Because I think we've all had those. <laughs> we, so th this actually didn't happen in Iron Mon, but it was in that Chaos Fish challenge I was telling you about where yeah. I was trying to beat, um... I was trying to beat with a fish that gained a new level, a new move every single level, right? So I was in the late game of my Chaos Carp challenge, and because you lose a move, you lose your oldest move every time you level up. Level 97 is the first move that you're guaranteed to be allowed to keep for the entirety of the rest of the game, right? At level 97, I learned Sketch. And I popped off so hard. I got so excited. Sketch being the move for the chat who might not know. Um, sketch being a move that lets you essentially copy the last mo used move of another Pokemon. So we got Sketch, which our Magikarp desperately needed to beat the game. We got Ice Beam from the Articuno in the Seafoam Island, and that Ice Beam was the little little bit of gas that we needed to end up conquering the Elite Four. So that was like a super pop-off moment. I think those are typically the pop-off moments for me, is like when we get a really clutch move at the perfect time. I can't believe this is gonna... Things are... I mean, I, again, I don't want to commentator's curse you, right? But, like, I can't believe you're going to have a run that continues from GDK into this. Like, I'm so stoked. Couple it's more shocking, left. yeah. Oh, last battle, last battle! Here we are, yeah. Bills. Doomdo is gonna get through this, no problem. No problem. Yeah, and we still have a lot of battles until the next gym, because even after Bill, we don't go directly into Misty. We would um, instead go... Leave, head down to Vermilion City, fight all the trainers there, fight all the trainers to the right, and then either choose to go into the SSN or go fight Misty. A lot of players will kind of do one or the other in that situation. For me, it always depends on what my current move set is and how far away I am from the next level. Because Misty's gym is only three trainers, but she does have high-level Pokemon. Meanwhile, SSN a little bit easier to handle, but there is a lot of trainers and potential experience that you'll miss out on if you uh, if you go too soon. And right. there it is. Yeah, we got the last trainer done. We go to Bill. I am so proud of you in this run next water. Like, thank you. Thank again. you so, so, so much. Absolutely. It was my pleasure. This was so much fun. I'm so excited to get to show off the a little bit of Kaizo Ironmon for everybody at GDQ. Again, if this looks like fun, it's very accessible. You don't have to play Kaizo. You can try out Ultimate or Vanilla Ironmon, which are a lot more accessible than the what we're doing here today. Um, it's, it's a great time. Again, shout outs to I Ate Your Pie, who created this challenge, who incepted the idea of it. Really fun stuff. There's a whole community that spawned outside of it. And um, apart from that, if you want to watch me finish this run, you know where to find me. Twitch.tv slash xwater. And I'm sure it's going to end up somewhere on one of my YouTube channels. So go ahead and search me there. I have a VODs channel, regular channel, all that stuff. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to, to be here, Sky. Thanks so much for having me on the show. I really, really, really appreciate it. I've, I've had so much fun hanging out with you tonight. Absolutely, likewise. So again, please follow XWater at twitch.tv slash XWater for folks watching on YouTube. That is X-W-A-T-E-R, all one word. 
And real quick, a few GDQ announcements before we are out for the evening. Remember, Aimbot is coming up next, so please do not leave. We are going to be so excited to have some Aimbot going on tonight. But remember, if you're watching on YouTube, go to twitch.tv slash games done quick. If you're interested in looking at our live content starting weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. As always, your subs, gift subs, prime gaming subs, and bits help support weekly hot fix content. Please consider supporting our daily content if you enjoy these hot fix shows. And of course, very excited for this. Frame Fatale will be having its next all women speedrunning event, Flame Fatale, in late August. Game and volunteer submissions are open right now until May 22nd. Type exclamation point FF in Twitch chat or go to gamestonequick.com slash Frame Fatale for more information. Also, tomorrow I will be back. We're going to be having Chocolate Dave on in Hades for Mercy Kill. All weapons. So if you love Hades, please be sure to be here for Mercy Kill tomorrow. Again, that's 7 p.m. Eastern here on GDQ Hot Fix. So very, very, very excited for that. Again, we will also have it never before seen tomorrow immediately after. So again, just wonderful content tomorrow. But this is not the end of our content tonight. Coming up next is Amber.